Are you looking for a faster video? Well, today it's a live stream and I know you're probably looking for a really nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing! Hello, ooh, it's so bright. <laughs> hello, hello, happy Saturday. How are you doing? Um, I'm kind of surprised that it was kind of bright. Let's see, there we go. That's a little better, huh? All right, I'm a little bit allergenic today. Fingers crossed. It hardly ever happens anymore. Hi, Justine. Hey, Nancy. Hey, Delwyn. Hey, Terry. Hey, Jessica. Sue and Anna, Rachel, nice to see you all. Anna, I've started Critical Role. Okay, I found a podcast. I found the podcast of Critical Role, but I think it only starts at season two or three. And I was like, dang, this would be perfect. So, hey, Michelle, hey, Amy, hey, Heidi. <clears throat> cool, cloudy day in Kentucky. Rub it in, why don't you? <laughs> I just disabled the weather thing on my taskbar finally, which is such, so great. I liked the seeing the weather there, but um, if my mouse got anywhere near it, this whole big thing would cover my screen. It's so annoying. I'm like, dude, I'm like busy here. Hi, Aisha. How's it going? All right, so I noodle on this, noodled on this so that you don't have to deal with my noodling. Um, I know you like it to a point, but you know what I mean. I also cut these connectors that I completely missed. So um, those are two pieces. I, I don't know how I missed these. You're <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's okay. We're in that um, heat dome. Do, do, do. Um, so far, it feels like normal hotness. But there is a fire north of us in Siskiyou County, which, you know, is a little bit scary. It's not near me at all, but I just really feel for those little towns. It's 80 and you're chilly. Ooh, you're only going into colder weather. How'd you end up where you live? Yeah, exactly, Michelle. Who needs it? Hi, Barbara. <laughs> Barbara definitely doesn't need it. It's even hotter where she is. So I thought that you directly did, uh, okay. You know what? I think that um, it might be in their Geek and Sundry podcast or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I just started watching the YouTube, but you know what I mean? It's like watching, um, it's like hundreds of hours. It'd be great if I could listen to some of it too, but I know watching is also part of it because it is really fun. So what is, oh, never mind. All right, so should we get to it? All right, we're going to get to it because I had a Zoom scheduled this afternoon with someone and it's been postponed. And so I'm kind of thinking about doing an afternoon stream. And I wanna do the, the new Friday company sport shorts. I don't know what you guys think about that. So 89 and muggy, ooh yeah. <laughs> you made that mistake. I don't think he thinks it's a mistake. 
Um, when I was a lot younger, I was living with my parents temporarily, getting debt free, right? And my mom wanted me to date. Like she kind of was kind of um, sort of gently, but kind of pushily gently, you know, like kind of like um, suggesting I date and meet guys. Um, oh, I, I actually think I had moved out and I was living on my own again, but I was still in Southern California. And I just had to be honest with her. I was like, you know, the thing is, the thing is, mom, that I don't want to settle down here. I don't want to settle down here in the city um, where I was living. I liked where I lived because I chose it, but it didn't, it wasn't where I wanted to spend forever. And I just said, you know, I just don't want to go through the, the whole thing of like, meeting someone, falling in love, and what if they want to settle down here, you know? Like, I just didn't want to have to put them through that or me through that. And she actually was like, oh, that's that's a legit, you know, way to think about it. And so I waited until I, uh, well, I, you know, I dated, but you know what I mean? So, scooped up from her, really, good. really? Oh, that's great, Michelle, I'm so glad. 106 at 8. See, that's it, Barbara. That's the worst, is the at night when it's hot. Yeah. When it's hot at night, but it's been cooling off here so far to like 70 overnight. I know it's not that cool. <laughs> like in the middle of the night, it's like 68 or 70. But we're pretty happy if it, it does. Like if it gets in the 50s, we're, we're thrilled because you can sleep, you know. All right, okay, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm thinking about doing this today. And um, fair warning, one of the reasons I wanna sew this is that I've sewn the City Gym shorts, which are very similar, but these are actually kind of cute because they have, a, and they have a pocket. So I really like this. I'll probably do one thing different is I think I'll open up the leg because they look kind of tight on people. I'll open the leg a little bit, but this is my fair warning bit. I'm probably gonna use this binding attachment that I got for my industrial machine just as a fun little thing to do. And I feel kind of guilty doing that because I know that that's not helpful for a lot of people, but it is still kind of a fun little experiment and there are there are gadgety people out there that are kind of interested in that. And I'm just gonna make them for my daughter from scrap fabric. These are perfect scrap fabric types of projects. Cause you can do the front and back completely different. You can do the contrast waistband. I, I love how they did theirs. I would love to do like a gingham binding, but my the gingham binding I have doesn't quite match the fabric I'm thinking of using. So I was so sorry. <laughs> hey, I mean, you can't stop love no matter what. So, hey, Libby. <laughs> they were fine. They were fine on you. Your legs are pretty trim. They're okay then. Okay, my daughters are pretty trim too, so maybe, maybe I would leave it. I don't know. I'm not talking about a lot. Like I'm not trying to make them dolphin shorts where it's like, who, why bother wearing the shorts? <laughs> um, I was just saying, Michelle, that um, I was thinking about doing a stream this afternoon because I had a Zoom get postponed. So I actually have a whole afternoon and I know there's lots of things I could be working on, but this is something I just kind of want to do and I thought it'd be fun. So I was thinking about streaming after this stream, a completely different thing. But I'm not filming and editing them. Yeah, exactly. And I haven't used that attachment since I got it. So if it doesn't work, I'll be binding them by hand. And, and we love that. I got to clean my glasses. You literally can't see chat with <laughs> So, okay, uh, lastly, definitely not lastly, what are dolphin shorts, Jessica? You're either much younger than me <laughs> or you are forgetting the 80s phenomenon of dolphin shorts. And they were just like, they were basically this silhouette, but they were in like slinky nylon knit type of fabric or, or not even knit and they were um, kind of clingy and really short and you had and there was like fake underwear built into them and so oh I don't know they were just a nightmare they were just a nightmare for some of us who wanted to sit on hot seats or didn't want our fanny hanging out of our shorts so 
These aren't for me. They're for my daughter. But it doesn't... It, it, I'm just like... I don't know. They look fine on the models. I just think that they're snug looking. Like they potentially could look snug. Look. They're close fitting. Sloppy Joe shirts. That sounds kind of familiar. Um, there's a picture of him on a bicycle. They sure on the models, yeah. The mother's very, very, uh, yeah. Are you Aisha? Yeah, I mean, my parents moved closer to me, and how did that work for them, you know? So, I still feel bad about that. <laughs> it is marketed as a diaper bag, Kathleen, yeah. Yes, okay, so lastly, I know this isn't lastly, but you guys have to check out the hashtag for this bag bell baby bag if you have an instagram account because who boy man there are some really nice bags made a lot of like leather or fake leather versions and there are people making them probably more than once because they've dialed in some of the like um details to do on them and they've a lot of them make the pockets this end pockets on the inside elasticized which i think is really really smart because it Secures whatever's in them and it p puts it closer to the bag. So, hi Aussie Sheik, how's it going? You found your bell pattern? Nice. Okay, let's get to it. <laughs> I had a members only jacket. It was like this really deep, deep, like eggplanty. It wasn't egg, eggplant's more of like a blue purple. This is more of like a Cabernet wine type of purple, but dark, dark, dark. <laughs> These are so funny. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I think I'm going to put a little, okay, so I have pink thread on my machine right now. And so we're, we need to do some, some, we need to do our pink stuff right now. You're sewing up your glissandos? Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I want to put the label on right now. I kind of pulled all my, um. I have this uh, pink thread on right now. So I was thinking I'm just going to put it like this. I'm going to put this little dream it, make it, because it has a little moon. You know, this is called Moon Rabbit. Oh. Yeah, may the force be with you. Well, I mean, if she's sewing them, she's, she's in the clear. If she were fitting them, I would definitely be like, Let's do a little dance for you around the sewing goddesses uh, or the sewing fairies uh, shrine. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to put this right here. And then this way, because I have this rectangular one, I can hang mine down below it like that. That's my plan anyway. <sighs> but I have a zipper foot on. I'm kind of rubbish at using it. Let's see. There's not a lot of purchase on the fabric, you know? Okay. Make sure it parallel to the edge. I just kind of guessed at how far down to put it. So hopefully this is far down enough. I think so. There's nothing else really to go in here. And I, I, we don't really care if people see it or not. We're just doing this so that we don't forget to do it and it'll look more finished. And because I saw that hashtag and I was so inspired by all the amazing Bell baby bags out there. Very, very cool stuff. I want to make more of these swoon patterns. Just for some fun stuff. Okay. So I'm going to change my thread out. I'm pretty sure... Well, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew my lining together and then I'm going to 
Then I'm gonna change my thread out. That's my plan. Ouch, jeez Louise. Don't look at chat when you're sliding off the presser foot. <laughs> well, how are you guys? How's your Saturday? Are you guys making stuff this weekend? Are you just chilling? I, no, I, I can do whatever I want, Jessica, and I'm not keeping it, so it's going to sit in their store. They might sell their samples or, or maybe give them to people. I don't know. <clears throat> and I'm not, I didn't cut the stuff out to make the stroller clips, but they did provide me the hardware. Like, I have hardware for them, so I'm thinking I should have cut those out. So I might, maybe I'll do that later. <laughs> oh, is that what the purple fabric was on your cutting table in that picture? Your, your experiments? All right, let's get all these pieces. I think what confused me in these instructions, I'm just going to say this one little thing that confused me when I read this through. Because I read this whole through and I read it rather than skimming it live on camera so I could give it proper attention, right? So at one point, so I'm skipping ahead one step because usually you will put the zipper on the top, assemble the outer bag, and then you do the same for the lining, right? And I'm doing the lining first. So here is what I think is weird, is that it says, okay, where is it? Lines are the lining side panels. It says to repeat this whole thing. Repeat, okay, wait, open the zipper entire way. I feel like it says at one point to repeat to sew the whole lining together to make your bag. Yeah. Lining bottom panels, the main panels, gusset at five eighths. Oh yeah, we aren't in five eighths inch land. Oh, you you do bare seam allowance on the lining. On the bottom panel. Okay. Oh man, now I'm kind of lost in these directions. These directions are they're good, but you have to really read through them to understand what they're talking about. It's a little bit um, wordy. You know, like mark all centers on all pieces. That's enough. Hey, Terry. <laughs> nice. Oh yeah, I saw they have the So How Seven. I really want to make that one too. You mending jeans? You started the lyric dress. Cool. Um, where is it? I just want to make sure, because I was about to say, this is one thing I think is confusing, but maybe I'm wrong, but it doesn't say this. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, maybe I'm wrong. Because the steps you do can't be the same. Uh, because you have a zipper on one and you don't on the other. So maybe it's just to repeat to mark all lines. Oh no, yeah, it does say that. Okay, whatever. I'm just gonna sew. <laughs> okay. So let's see here. Let's put our pocket onto this piece here. I do feel like I may be making mistakes today. Oh, one, maybe your phone got updated or something. I have the weird thing like when I'm posting uh, like an article and say I want to post a picture, like multiple pictures, I sometimes can't get the, the plus sign prompt. I just did this pocket upside down. That's a bummer. Oh well, I, I'm not gonna worry about it though. It's inside the bag. I mean, we're on the hinterland. I can make him a Madras shirt. I said I really like a favor to me. You will let me make your shirt. <laughs> your S's are twins. <laughs> I love it. B 
because he he you're le he like thinks you're doing you a favor by letting you make him something, Terry, or he wants a madras shirt as well. Hey, Sydney, how's it going from the land of your remodel? You should have only bought one wet. What did I miss? Oh, the bag thing. You knew you wanted more than one. Come on. How can you just stop at one? It's like peanut M&M's. Their idea of a serving is laughable. All right. Here's the, the, the um, side. All right. So my only thing here is I want to know how big this zipper thing is before I, so if we fold this back like this, or is it more like this? You sew this uh, right sides together. So I swear I promise I have this under control this time. <laughs> oh yeah, there you go, Sydney. Sounds like a good plan. I was thinking you might want to go to the nursery. Only at one inch seam allowance, only for half inch backstitch. Switch along. Okay, so it's a one inch seam allowance at the um, zipper. Okay. Um, and the way I can double check that honestly is just by it sewing to these little panels right here. So here's my ends, All right? You need to construct this little um, ends and zipper thing. So I'm just gonna check the seam allowance right here. Right, like this. If you're ever in doubt, it needs to meet right there. So this one is more like, plus the zipper. So, all right. We fold this back one inch, right? Okay, we're gonna fold this back one inch. We're gonna iron it. One inch. If you fold this back one inch, huh? Because um, that's what they say to do to use to use one inch seam allowance there. That means that. Oh, and they tell you to do the zipper. All right, so, oh, I forgot my ruler. I'm trying to turn the thing a little bit. So my thing, thing of wondering is if you turn this back one inch, right? We'll say to there, to the foam. Yeah, I guess that almost meets, but it would be a little short. So just saying. I'm doing this so complicated. <laughs> Where's my head? Because if this is like overlapping here, that's really, that's not an inch at all. Plus you want it to be a little bit more. So we'll do an inch because we're going to just edge stitch this. All right, I'm going to stop being clever. Well, I can't promise anything, but I'll try. I will try my best. Thankfully, there are so many people who've made this bag. There's probably a really good tutorial out there. I'm just here to provide the um, real world experience of being a sewer. <laughs> I know, that's really funny. <laughs> oh, man. Mm -hmm. 
feel like I should do more. This isn't how I put in zippers, but we don't really have much of a choice. Of sewing. So let me do you a favor, <laughs> girl. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna sew this together and I'm I'm getting kind of confused about the seam allowances right now. I think five eighths was the call because we're gonna do it a little bit bigger than the outer bag. Oof. I'm confident I will get myself out of this pickle if I get myself into a pickle. All right, I'm gonna edge stitch this down. <laughs> I probably put these on a little prematurely and I think the instructions have you do it after this step so it's not so fussy, you know? I definitely made it a little fussy. Yeah, I mean, Terry, have you ever heard this phrase, what's in it for me? You know? <laughs> all right. I'm gonna um, mark all my centers. This is, this is definitely, I think that it, it would be nice if this were on the pattern like going through and doing this because someone would have just had to do it once on the pattern, right? Put the notches for the centers. Um, but now every single person who sews this has to do it. So it, am I doing something different right now? I thought I was kind of sticking close to it. Am I not? I kind of, I kind of am trying to stay a little bit close to it. But yeah, so I'm gonna assemble the outer, assemble the inner, bind it all at the inside bottom seam. My, my only thing right now is, I always say, I always start everything with, my only thing right now is when I have like more than just one only thing. <laughs> Uh, is that my panel, like my bottom panel, my the, the stabilizer piece, it's just kind of floating there because I didn't know I was supposed to, um, well, I don't have like two-sided fusible interfacing. So I'm kind of wondering about that. What, what was I gonna do there? Yeah, I'm not gonna put a zipper in the lining, but I am putting one in the outer. All right, so we're gonna sew this together. And, um, I'm gonna do like a five eighths seam. And so I'm just matching my centers here like this. Okay, everything's looking good. This is a really big seam allowance for doing these kinds of curves. So just do your best if you're doing this. Mm 
There we go. If you stay on the seam line consistently, it'll, it'll line up, but it won't feel like it's going to. That's just the nature of those kinds of things. Actually, I want to kind of hold the bottom layer. If I hold the bottom layer a little firm, it'll help me line this up. Did they turn out a bobbin? Sounds a little different. I did. I knew it. I don't know if I have another pink bobbin. Uh, I kind of do. Not much though. I'm just going to stick it to that and, um, you know, because I want to put navy blue on. Well, you do. Right, Nancy? I mean, you don't need five yards, but <laughs> there you go. I did that with the summer pants for my husband. I got um, extra to make to make something with because I liked the fabric. And I did the same for another fabric recently. I just got double. So I can trim this, right? I don't know why I'm asking. I, there's, there's actually... Oh yeah, they say to trim to an eighth of an inch. I, I'm not, I, that still makes me a little nervous. I'm just gonna do like a small quarter of an inch. Oof, this is thick. Come on scissors, you got this. I also think if you have a little tux on that curve right there, don't worry about it. it, it they won't show on the inside of the bag. If you wanna sit there and fuss with them and try and get them to not have any tucks. But the other really cool thing about this is that when you turn, well, actually the bag will stay like this. It'll stay inside out. I was about to say, um, on the outer bag, you have the benefit of that. When you turn the bag, you know, right side out like this, it's gonna pop that seam out and it's gonna kind of help anything that has the appearance of tucks, you know? Um, that is a, a strategy for if you want to get someone off of your back because you don't really want to make something or you really are just like, I will do it if they do the work of getting everything together. Um, I've done that many times where I'm like, here you go, here's the website. And then, and I say, this is what you're looking for. Don't get anything else like fabric type and you need this much and you might want to run it by me before you buy it. And eventually they, or they go to the Joanne Fabrics and they're like, oh, it's a lot of work. <laughs> like, <laughs> we haven't even started sewing yet. <laughs> so, yeah. This is probably a little easier to do this with the, the front back front or the back of the bag, this right here, um, the big, the main panel, I think it's called, on top. And another thing you can, another strategy you could do if you're having trouble with this curve is start from the top and go down in the center and then start from the top and go down like that. But um, I think that it, that, it, a lot of times I like to do that where things like collar stands and things, but on something like this, it's gotta match up. So if you're needing to do that because you're having trouble getting it to line up, that's probably not going to help as much as you think. Because at the end of the day, it has to line up. And you don't want your bag to be like this, like kind of like torqued like, like this. And that can happen. And that is why one, one of the reasons of why going starting the top and bottom or going from the bottom and going to the top on each side can help that. I've seen a lot of bags, even at shows, and I can tell the bag is torqued like that, that's being sold. Um, and I don't think people know to look for that, especially in a handmade bag, but your bag will always sit funny, you know? 
And it just, it's, some people will notice it, some people won't. Sometimes it's not a big deal, sometimes it's just annoying, you know? But it is a three dimensional object, so it's got a posture, you know? That is a lot of fabric. Yeah, in 15 minutes, yeah, exactly. All right, so here's the inside of our bag. Right? All right, so now we're gonna do the outside. So one thing interesting is that you're supposed to sew this, what's that sound? Oh, it's the hardware on here. I'm like, it sounds like hardware. <laughs> it is hardware. <laughs> um, you're supposed to sew this seam right here, right sides together, and then place your zipper on the back. And um, I'm not gonna do that. I find that to be kind of hard. <laughs> so, but that's just me, you know? If you like doing it that way, do, definitely go for that. All right, so I'm gonna just sew this right sides together put my blue thread in. Oh, that's awesome, Jessica. That's a, that's a gem. That's the kind of story you submit to, um, can you sew this for me? When they have, on Saturdays, they have their sweets, their Saturday sweet stories, and it's stories like that. Yeah, those really are. I don't know which one the ethyl is, but if it's anything like this, I'm sure you didn't charge enough. <laughs> Do you ever think that there could be a business for just sewing, sewing, sewing patterns for people? You know, like meaning like, it, the thing is like, I feel like the type of person who's looking for custom things doesn't really know the home sewing world, right? They're not up to date in all the patterns or anything. So there's, I feel like there's no market for that. But it would be so gratifying, like for me, because there's just patterns I want to get out of my system, but I don't really want to own or I don't really need, you know? And it would be really fun to do that. Maybe for the home sews who wants to pretend like they sewed something. <laughs> you put their label in it. <laughs> there's gotta be people doing that. <laughs> Imagine. All right, these are the connectors, which, um, is this really how this is sewn? Is it really just turned back like this and then put in the bag like that? It's so long. <sighs> I better look at the directions again. You made it like a Vera Bradley quilting. Wow, fancy, Jessica. Um, all right, let me look at these connectors real quick. Okay. All right, so you need uh, four of these, I guess. I think the others are for the stroller things. So I'm just gonna cut one for now so I don't lose the, you know, the other little one. And then we're gonna put our D rings on now. Ooh, that one came off nicely. I don't really need more plastic containers, but these are cool. <laughs> I like how I can hang them up. All right, so we're gonna put our D-ring on there, and then we're just gonna sew up, and then across. And 
and then down. And I'm gonna go across again right here. Kind of like I did on the others. Oh, that's cool, Rachel. Oh boy, Terry. Terry, you're living in a house of fashion designers. You're like Cinderella there, man. <laughs> Better watch out. <laughs> Unless you can sing to mice, I don't know. <laughs> Get him to start helping you. Okay, so these go on those ends, right? These right here. Again, I put the pockets on a little early. We'll uh, mark the center here, right here, and we're gonna put our connector right here. Hmm. Oh, it does come out of the seam, okay. Okay. There's kind of pokes. Okay. Maybe that's too long. Hmm. They gave they gave so much, you know. <laughs> Your shoulder shoes. Well, you can make those mice do what you want. <laughs> I feel that, I felt that way for a long time, Nancy. I didn't like the cutting part either for a long time. Now I like it. it it's kind of, for me, the part of the creative process. Like it's part of the des designing the garment, you know? I'm gonna put this pocket on here. Just getting all my pieces ready for the zipper. Not that these will be affected, but I'm gonna sew them to these ends next. Our bag's like kind of close to being done in a way. Like we're on the home stretch getting everything now. It's all gonna start coming together pretty quickly. Let's see how good I do on the binding seam or the piping seam. In other words, Rachel's saying, you'd be doing me a kindness if you took my madras. <laughs> right, Rachel. I think the iron is hot, right? Strike while the iron is hot. All right, so this zipper goes in, look at it, it's perfect length, this one here. Um, we're gonna sew this in at the one inch, on the one inch seam line. Why does this have a one inch seam? I don't understand that because if you sew this, the way they have you do this is that you sew this right sides together like this, one inch seam, and then you press it open and you top stitch your zipper behind it. So what I like about this is it means the zipper will be hidden, right? Uh, behind the folds, right? Uh, but I don't know. I, I think I'm gonna do this right sides together. I'm looking at the picture. I think I'm gonna do this so that our zipper, let's say it lands right here on the center our seam allowance will be like, if we do it here, yeah, like at three eighths, let's try it. I'm gonna put this face down, right sides together, right? And I'm gonna put the edge of the tape an eighth of an inch away from the raw edge here. I'm gonna sew this three eighths of an inch. Okay. 
Okay. We're going to do the other side now. Because my zipper is the exact same length, I'm going to go um, kind of go against my usual thing where I would go down. If I go down from the, uh, the top, I would do from the top on the other side as well, doing the same thing. Habit of cutting into no man's land. <laughs> um, Rachel, that sounds like like the potential for like an amazing bed covering or curtain. And I love plaid though, you know. All right, let's go iron that. Probably could have ironed this actually first, you know? Definitely went about this in a funny way, but I, this isn't how I would do the uh, zipper closure. But I, I'm not saying like it's a bad thing. Um, so this is good. This is like I like it when someone does something a little differently than how I would. And uh, you can totally sew the seam shut and then center the zipper and stitch it down around it. But I have to tell you, I'm not very good at that. Um, I, I definitely have trouble keeping things like centered and my stitches parallel to the edge in the same distance on either side. So I'd much rather do it to where I can see it like this. And now I can just top stitch this and um, maintain a nice even distance, you know? Play to your strengths. You'll never see me do like centered zippers on many things because I, I just don't don't really do too well on them. Stop that! Don't act like that. We'll start at the side, top here. slightly going like this with my hand on this side to make sure my fabric doesn't torque, you know, like go like this, pull into the fold. It wants to because <clears throat> there's foam, it's kind of thick. Um, the pressure of my um, presser foot is gonna push the fabric toward me. So I'm always just kind of gently fighting it. Um, no, not yet. You just gave me a heart attack, Heidi. <laughs> Yeah, you're supposed to, um, I could have, I actually should have, no, I couldn't have. Yeah, see, this is the thing is like, I feel like you're supposed to top stitch it down, but your whole bag would be formed by then. I don't know how you'd get in there and do it. <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, you're supposed to top stitch right over the existing top stitching along the zipper, starting at one side seam and ending at the other. Yeah, I don't really like that. Sorry, but never what? I'm going to, it'll be attached eventually. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, uh. you're supposed to line it up. Like when you're, when you end up getting the whole bag inside there, you're going to line up this folded edge here. 
and you're supposed to top stitch it down. I put in the label right here. So we could kind of we could kind of look and see how this is going to line up right now, right? <clears throat> Let's see how it's going to line up. This is would be so hard to do. Let's see. I'm going to line up this that make sure so see in there yeah it is it's adjustable all right so far you guys I am really not far from the directions like I, w this is where you would be oh except look at that what the heck oh that's the first time oh my god that was the wrong end <laughs> I was like, I triple checked that. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. Okay, <laughs> okay. Now I'm putting the ends here, and um, like I said before, I jumped the gun and put these pockets on here. So if you need to pull them down a little bit to get the seam allowance correct, go for it. Yeah, it's just stitched a second time though. Sounds super fiddly. I was trying to do this in a way, and there is a way. If you want me to explain it, there is a way where you would not have to do that. And all it would take is shortening this panel right here on either end, like either that or shortening your pocket. Because what you need is you need a piece going across the zipper. And then that way, when your piece, like you could sew this whole thing to where you did the lining and this outer, like right sides together to the zipper sand, sandwich like that, right? And so then this would be clean finish with the lining on this on either side, right? And then if you had a little end piece, that would allow that lining piece, right? That edge on the inside coming out to be free. And then you would have the ability to, um, sew it so that it goes into the lining of the bag and you wouldn't have to do this whole thing. And then you would just finish the bottom seam, like they say. So I, I don't know if that made sense because I didn't really demonstrate it, but um, there is a way. You just need that, you need the, the lining to be floating freely. All right, so I'm gonna top stitch this down. I, ha I don't necessarily, I don't think I've done anything differently yet. I just did it in a kind of a slightly different order in a slightly different way. Yeah, this pocket's supposed to line up with this edge, so sorry I told you to do this earlier. <clears throat> my chicken boots bag sewing kind of kicked in <laughs> on when I would have done that. <laughs> so, all right, so now we'll do this side. <laughs> we all have our strengths, Nancy, you know? Like, it's so true. Like, I, I will be like, I'm, I'm going to sew a pair of jeans, and then I, I, I'm like, ooh, I kind of need a new pair of underwear, and then I'm like, four hours later, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Top stitching this one now. Putting my pocket back on. This is getting kind of thick. The foam is kind of nice though because it's pliable, you know? I 
All right, so now we have our bag outer. And now we sew this to the main bag. I'm gonna mark all my centers right now. Better to do it now when all these are not attached to each other uh, because you're gonna absolutely need something when you sew the bottom on since it's an it's an oval and ovals are kind of hard. I'm not looking forward to it. Yeah, this is my first time too, Jessica. I always use something like Peltex, you know, kind of similar to that, which is thinner and stiffer, but not as uh, flexible like this is this is so nice that it holds its whole shape like this but it's also movable whereas the the Peltex is um, very stiff I never liked this when I first started seeing it I never liked it and I and um, and I'm sorry if this is kind of like sounds rude but it reminded me of quilting bags like bags made with with quilting and I didn't want my bags to be in that market. I really wanted mine to, I had a whole customer in mind because they were a knitter, they weren't a quilter. And so I needed to make sure that my bags were gonna appeal to them. And if, and because there were bags at the same shows that looked like they were geared towards the quilting market and knitters know, they know that. So, um, I stayed away from it, but this foam became much more popular in bag making. And by the time I was leaving the world, it was very well accepted. So just like me, they, they had to educate their customer into going, no, this is actually a really good bag making thing. And I already had my whole thing with Peltex, so I was like, eh, I'm good. Ooh. What are you doing there? All right, so we have this and this. This one, the center is very well easy to see, right? <laughs> okay. Okay, so I'm gonna look at my seam um, allowance here. I did a smaller seam allowance than they, they say to do. And I'm half considering taking the piping off and, um, and doing the correct seam allowance. I don't know. The seam allowance on the piping is so small though that I feel like this way, it's, I know I've got it lined up around the edge. I don't know why, but I thought the seam allowances were a quarter inch on this bag because one of the steps I saw said use a quarter inch. <clears throat> and then I saw this step when I was reading through how to finish the whole bag and it says it's at like five eighths or a half. And I was like, I really wish the seam allowances were printed on there. All right, will the Peltex bend or crease and not recover? No, it does. It's not, um, like it doesn't bend or crease as easily either. But yeah, you can, I mean, some of it, like if it's been like, like say it got rolled when it gets rolled up because our my rolls were huge. They look like big things of marshmallow. They were like huge. I had to have a truck deliver them on pallets. <laughs> Because we would buy something like 600 yards at a time and it's 44 inches wide. And say there was like a wrinkle in the middle of the roll and it got rolled up like that. That is a crease that's unrecoverable. But others, we um, we never, there, aren't, there just aren't wrinkles in it. I guess that's what I should say. This doesn't really happen. It's pretty hard for it to crease. But this stuff, like I didn't actually iron it out and you can still see there is a crease. Um, see it right here? It's still there. I don't see it in the fabric though, so I've just left it alone. So if I do this, is this a very small seam allowance? Should I just take the piping off and do it in a little bit? Oh, I just feel like there's problems with either. 
you know? Like, I think that there's... Hmm. I don't mind taking it off and re-sewing it. But can I get it on there? So I could line it up to the... I'm going to take it off. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm going to take it off. And we'll just re-sew it on there. I was thinking I could rip it. Are you saying I can't rip it? There we go. That's where that seam is. Nancy, definitely, I, don't, I think if you iron that stuff, it'll get worse. So I don't know if you've been trying to iron it and it's getting worse. What about starch? Aren't you a proponent of starch? You could lay another piece of fabric on top of it, but then you're gonna be like, is it straight, is it okay? Hey, Vestigia, how's it going? Nice to see you. <laughs> We're almost done with the bag. Yeah, definitely try single layer. I, I agree with Aisha on that. That stuff is like, I feel like when you guys cut that stuff out, it's kind of like, uh, all the knit experts would probably cringe for hearing me say this, but it's kind of like ripping off a Band-Aid. You just got to do it quick and you're like, yep, it's not perfect because you're not using like a, a spray-on adhesive to make sure that it stays okay, you know? You're not, you're not doing some of the tricks they do when they do, like think about in the garment industry, they have to do like hundreds of layers on one top of the other. <laughs> Sounds like a nightmare, doesn't it? Nightmare. All right, this one's off. Let's get this going. I'm always cautious to do ripping near a notch that I've cut into the fabric because it'll it'll rip it, you know. Oh man, I ripped my piping. Should have been more worried about that, honestly, because it's ancient for fabric. Double, yeah, double brush poly. Took me so long to figure that out. Um, like ITY, uh, like none of these terms, like I'm telling you, I didn't really hear these until I got to the home sewing world. And I think people like toss them around as like a, like to a show off thing sometimes. And, and, and they make it, you feel like you can't ask. <laughs> what is ISO? Does that mean um, in search of? Like when you, not sewing related. All right, let's try this. I'll, I'll just, I'm gonna try this seam, this uh, presser foot too. All right, so I'm gonna do it a little wider. Maybe I'm gonna line up my So if this were here, like that, and I wanted it to be more like, I think I'm gonna do it more like a half inch seam, a scant half inch. In search of, oh, okay. <laughs> Didn't know that. Yeah, double brush poly can be really hot. I don't buy it very often. I, I've actually bought it maybe once. Um, but that really cute watermelon dress I did for Hearts Fabric, that was the first time I've ever sewn with it. 
And um, I made a pair of underwear out of the um, extra, and I love them. <laughs> They're not ideal underwear fabric, but um, they're, I like the way they feel. They're really soft. All right, so I'm just kind of maintaining a half inch seam allowance with my edge of my project on my throat plate here. And then putting the piping under the needle where that is at. Good, it's ready. Does anyone here read blogs? I'm not looking for blog recommendations. I'm actually looking, I'm, I'm trying to understand if people read blogs in general. I don't, to be honest, unless I'm looking for something. Like, mad respect to bloggers. I just uh, haven't been a blog reader. I don't know why. Okay. And then I can reuse this one. They really are, aren't they? Yeah, I agree, Nancy. We got static in the dryer. Try a wool dryer ball with them, might help. Let's see, I'm just looking for any threads that might plague me later. Okay, put this one on, then we'll put our bag together. Still kind of nervous about that zipper seam. Might be some a moment where I'm like, let's hand sew. <laughs> Watch Sarah me chicken out. Yeah, exactly. Do you, K Kathleen? You read food blogs too, Amy? Amy? Hmm. That seam allowance got a little off there. Was Google Reader a way to keep track if your there was a new like a next um, post in the blog series you were following, kind of like podcasts or, um, well, yeah, like podcasts. Whoa, I just got a little bit crooked there. Oh yeah, email newsletter. Oh man. Well, I let go of my email newsletter list because it was costing me um, every month like $60 just to have it. That's the thing with newsletter lists is I think like some people don't want you to ever unsubscribe, but if you're never opening their newsletter, you would do them a kindness to unsubscribe because um, it costs a lot of money to have those. Yeah, kind of like, yeah, that's cool, Rachel. There's nothing like that anymore. Wow. Exactly. Power through. Rip the Band-Aid off. You need a mnemonic for the sewing order of a French seam on a pants front pocket bag. I get it wrong every time. Everything gets French seam, same exact order as sewing a pocket on. That's all. <laughs> Pockets to pants. French seam. Wrong sides together, right sides together. Front to back. Wrong sides together, right sides together. You're going to have to um, potentially, you have to clip up into the crook of the under of the bag when you do that one. 
Yeah, that that's what I was saying, Nancy, is like you don't get all those like things in the garment industry that they would do in some cases, and they don't always do that. That's expensive. But um, that is one of the things they do. They used to nail it to the table. I've heard people doing nailing stripes, especially. You got this, Libby. I almost did this as a French seam. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I'm gonna sew this on. And actually, I do want it like this. I'm gonna put this side up because I wanna see my seam where my piping is so that it doesn't show on the right side. Here we go. All right, so we have this center. This is non negotiable right here, right? And then we're gonna go around this curve like this. I'm just gonna stay to the left of that piping sewing. I can't guarantee my piping will look great, but you know, it's on there. <laughs> That's what I'm going for. Oh. It used to mean that. Oh, Libby, that's a different problem. That does sound really hard. It used to mean that. Like I could never figure out what it meant. And I and there like I never thought to Google it because I, I don't know. That wouldn't have been Googleable at the time. <laughs> um and I just I just couldn't figure it out. It really annoyed me. Now I use it, but I didn't start using it till a few years ago. And it was really just trying to uh, like fit in with the gaming community. Because <laughs> they're all a little different than me. Look at that little crooked jog here. Oh, don't you dare slip under. Don't you dare say you did that over here. Oh, you didn't, okay. I was a little worried. The seam allowance on this piping is so small that it was it's folding onto itself. And so I just saw it here before I caught it before I sewed it that way. So then the raw edge of the piping would have showed to the right side. I think Libby's not doing anything wrong. It's just like the fabric's hard to tell the difference between right and wrong side. That sounds really hard. So your pockets are supposed to line up here. Mine are like, I'm not focusing on that. And I, I apologize, I'm not. Um, the, look at the hashtag for true sewing inspiration. <laughs> Mine are okay. Let's see how I did. Oh, I'm glad we did the piping. That looks pretty good. There we go. But yeah, my pockets aren't matching perfectly. Well, that's a good one. Terry chalks a big X on those on the wrong side. It used to be lots of love and then it just got changed, I think, uh, lots of laughs. Oh, painter's tape wouldn't, yeah, you'd be able to see that. Look at that, Amy and Mafia had the same tip. Hey, Matilda, how's it going? She did make really cute shorts. I'm pretty sure it is the same, Michelle. All right, let's do this one. This was really easy to do. Let's backstitch. I don't backstitch usually. I have a whole reasoning for that. Backstitch there. It's gonna be important later on when we put the bottom on. Because we're gonna be hoiking on this thing. Okay, let's line up my non-negotiables. 
Yeah, it started out, people were interchanging the two. It was really confusing. Because I was like, why did that person say lots of love to me? That seems so weird. <laughs> yeah, I agree, Terry. So now maybe someone will take all my free piping in the guild. That's right, Heidi. I meant to do that. A bit bigger of a bag. I couldn't find the underside to pull because I forgot it was already sewn to another bag. You can't tell the difference in the A1 Wells. <laughs> Except some of her seams are probably, I mean, it's like French seam pockets, so she's probably already got some parts of it sewn that are certainly right and wrong side. <laughs> um, I'm doing a partial Aisha. I'm dropping it in, but I'm gonna sew the bottom with binding on the inside as one. Hey Pam, how's it going? You know, first of all, Nancy, the fact that someone can't write out lots of love in a situation like that, and they're gonna they're gonna resort to that anyway. You know. <laughs> So if you need to adjust your bag, the length of it, ooh, this one I got a little bit off. Um, um, I, do it on these ends, the bottoms, the straight edges. Oh, cool, Kathleen. Kathy, I got that one too. No, you didn't miss out. Oh, really, Anna? Was it fangirl? <laughs> I love, I love all Rainbow Rowell's books. They're so good. All right, let's check this one before I, um, well, we can turn it right side out, actually. Let's see. It looks like a bowling bag. I can't remember which one I just sewed. It's the one that's off a little at the bottom. This is this one here. This looks pretty good, you guys. What is that? A little bit of thread there. Look how nice that. It looks so professional. <laughs> you know, like this, it's patterns like this that really make you feel so like, ooh, I did that. You can um, make it. You, I used pre-made. But you could make it if you want, Justine. This stuff um, is uh, really tiny, the stuff I used. Get your <laughs> yeah, I never know what that means to you. I'm like, what is that? Like when they say please and they do the little prayer, I'm like, what? All right, so we have now, this is, this is my plan is that See, if I could have clean finished these together, and I could have if there'd been this little band right here, right? Um, then I would just have the bottom left. <laughs> From the files of Madison Finn. That actually sounds like kind of adorably cheesy though. <laughs> All right, I may wanna trim my seam allowances there. There's no, people are top stitching this. There's no way. There is no way people are doing that. I feel like I didn't do it right. Like they're top stitching this to this. Oh my God. Oh, 
I did, Libby. That was such a nice surprise. You could skip the stiffener thing too. There's no way people are doing this. No, it says they're stitching right on top of the stitching. I should have shown the way I was talking about. It would have saved so much headache for people. It's a bummer. Oh my gosh, no, nothing's cringier than the fact that I was so hooked on those really terrible V.C. Andrews books when I was in high school. That stuff should have been outlawed. So, it was so bad for a teenager to read those things. And I was just so, like, it was so deliciously bad. Like, you know, I was like, it was just so foreign to me, that kind of, like, whoa, that world. All right, what if we, um... <laughs> well, that's it for today. <laughs> I'm not sure how I would attempt this. Like, no, there's no way people are doing this. Okay, let's, um, I haven't even put the bottom on and you're supposed to do this after you put the bottom on. So I'm not definitely gonna put, I'm gonna do this right now. Okay, so let's see if we can do it. I'm gonna put some um, pins in here too. I'll just pin it and send it to them. Here you go. <laughs> Thanks for the project, bye. <laughs> this is Swoon, yeah. I love the bag. I, I just don't believe this is really how you're supposed to do this. Sorry, Swoon. You might be watching. But yeah, just consider the band across the bottom because then you're you're you'd have like a little you'd have a little piece of fabric right here. Like it, the zipper would stop here, right? And there'd be a piece of fabric right here that would ha able still be able to be sewn to this end piece right here. And then you could have sewn the zipper together all as a sandwich. And we love sandwiches. <laughs> like who doesn't love a sandwich? You know? It's tempting to take this whole thing apart and do that. No, I'm not, Terry. I'm just, I'm still following instructions for the most part. But, um... Oof, I don't know if this is, I didn't sew this far enough apart right here. So we'll see. I'm gonna sew it. My plan right now is that I'm positioning the lining so that I know it will get caught. This is like so against all Ceramese types of sewing things. And then I'm gonna sew it like this. I think it's the only way. You'd have to be able to sew from the right side but I'm just pinning the lining so that I know I'll catch it. Oh, school book fairs. That's loved school. I loved the school book fair. Um, was it? That would make sense. Oh, series of unfortunate. I couldn't watch the uh, read those. Those were so depressing. Nope. 
No. <laughs> Michelle. Yeah, yeah, there is a way you could do this. It would be a lot easier. It would decrease the zipper opening. Yeah, like the thing is, Michelle, I love melancholy stuff like that. Like my my book club kind of hated me because I like I like kind of things that I don't know why. I don't think I do until they pointed it out. And they're like, every time you pick a book, I'm crying. I'm like, really? <laughs> um but those were really stressful for my kid. We were kind of like, it's the same story over and over again. So we just stopped reading them. <laughs> so I think I'm going, to, I don't think I'm gonna make an announcement about it, but I've definitely been like formulating a, about like, I'm always changed. I know I'm always kind of noodling on what I want to be doing in this like space, you know, and um, the guild has been such an amazing thing. That's definitely going to be in our lives because we, we love it. The community, if you're looking for a community where just, it's just, it's just a really awesome space. I know people are really starting to create communities to buy membership to. Um, and that's awesome because I'm all about community. Um, definitely consider the guild because there's also no promoting of um, businesses and stuff like that in there. So you can be as honest as you want. Everyone's super nice though in there. Like no one's ever like, let me rant, you know, like no one's ever like that. But at the same time, like I like the fact that like, I, I don't really take sponsorships where I feel like I have to um, always say nice things, you know? And, um, well, I don't know. I think I'm going to take that a step further. Uh, uh, who's John Irving? This is out of context. I like, I love it, Rachel. Oh, me too, Michelle. I often rewatch TV shows too. I just started craving watching uh, the Gilmore Girls. I was like, don't do it, Sarah, because I can't stop when I, once I start. And that's a huge series. Yeah, but Terry, I mean, it doesn't matter if the bottom's on or not when I do it. I'm thinking it'll be easier without it on right now because um, it's less bag. So my last step is that I'm going to sew the bottom on and I'm gonna bind around the perimeter on the inside. So, and I actually think like, it's gonna be a little harder than I want it to be. Oh, I never trimmed my seam allowance. <laughs> Oi, Sarah me. Uh, I never trimmed my seam allowance. I started just going right in with that. Um, I'm going to trim it really quick. I know this is dangerous, but we're going to cut down this bulk. It makes me nervous that I didn't double stitch this too, you know? I don't think swoon patterns would swoon over the way I'm sewing this. <laughs> But you know, once you sew one, the next are so easy if you're gonna do multiples. Louise! Oh, okay, okay, yeah, I thought he was an author. What has he written? Because I feel like I have written something by him. Oh, I never want to avoid binding. Um, but you could, you're right. So Terry's right. Like if you don't want to do my way of doing it, the only thing I'm really going to change about how this is sewn is how I'm going to do the bottom. Um, and that's because I want the lining to be seated in there. And I think it's going to be hard to do, harder to, to do it than I think, but that's, you can learn by me, right? Um, 
But yeah, you could put the bottom onto the lining right now before you pin it to the top, like sew it right sides together and do the same for the outer. And now you have two separate bags, drop your lining into the bag and then pin it around here. Uh, double stitch, I mean, just stitch it twice. Like the fact that I only stitched around this perimeter one time is, um, I think that it would be better to do it twice. Just make sure. You know how you're afraid to sew it? No, I'm just making it look harder than it is. Because I, I, I like to noodle on the construction and everything, you know? I can see exactly why this seam didn't match because I didn't really line it up very well. Yeah, I'm, I love sewing binding. I have no problem sewing binding. I love it. My whole bag line was bound together. Like everything we sewed in our bags was bound. So I feel really comfortable with that and I really like how sturdy it is and clean. And I like the opportunity it gives to um, add another like fabric, you know? It is quilting cotton. <clears throat> Gotta get through that binding there. Um, it's called Moon what is it called? Moonrise Rabbits? Wait, <laughs> it's right here. Moon Rabbit. Moon Rabbit. <laughs> All right, let's put that back in there. Okay. How are we feeling about this? I mean, I've got it laying on there pretty good. This is just, we should have birthed it instead or something, I don't know. But we couldn't have, we, there, the thing is of the fact that this, yeah, I don't wanna talk about it anymore. <laughs> it's not possible. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna turn it like this and sew it from the right side. This is the other thing is like, you're supposed to stitch on your stitching, but it's like in a seam and everything, so I don't know. I think you should hand sew it. I need pink thread now and I don't have pink thread. I'm getting cranky about this now. I don't have any pink thread. I, oh, no. Let me find some, oh, here, this will work right here. Let's wind bobbin. You love the fast talking. I could do a little less of the mom much of the time, <laughs> but I adore Rory. <laughs> I mean, it's good. It's like, it's very, very well written and fun. It's, it's some of it's so inappropriate now though. Not inappropriate. Oh, anyway, I don't know. I, I it's not worth like mentioning, but some of it, I'm just like, oh, they could have done so much better there. Meaning like we could have left a seam, oh, I just tied off the wrong one. Um, we could have left a seam open and then put it through a hole of the bag and then you just edge stitch it shut. <laughs> there wouldn't be this step. I liked Rory. Oh, oh, Rory's mom. Rory's mom is a little much sometimes, especially the first few episodes. She talks way too much. <laughs> oh, you did? So how did she put her zipper in? Because the, the, the thing is, like, she had to have modified something else then, too. I got I to gotta wind a bobbin, and it's going to, everything's going to rattle. So we're going to hold this.
Well, let's put it, I'll do it as fast as it can go. I don't know if I can for very long. Everything's gonna rattle off though. Ready? All right, now we're done. <laughs> no one's downstairs. They say they can't hear me though. Put in a zipper pocket in the lining so she could turn it through. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Blue thread, blue thread. All right. Stop it. You won't let go of me. All right. You need a little piece of fabric. All right, so hopefully this will work. But yeah, so like, I don't know what to do when I get down here at the end. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, there's not even like the photo step of this. It says, place the lining wrong side out inside the exterior right side out. Which that's confusing. Pin or use fabric clips carefully along the zipper to pin the exterior and lining together, matching the folds along the zipper opening. The lining should extend past the zipper teeth just a bit. This will let the zipper glide underneath the fold so that it won't get caught. They mean past the zipper teeth going then to the interior of the bag, not to the exterior of the zipper teeth too, just so you know. Um, carefully top stitch right over the existing top stitching along the zipper, starting at one side seam and ending at the other. It may help to use your free arm if you have one. Back stitch it starts and stop, but you can't, you can't, if you cannot get to the very end, you may hand stitch any openings closed. No. Exactly. Well, if I hand sew, I could actually close the gap, but, um, I can't get closer. All right, let's just do it so I stop complaining about it. <laughs> here we go. Come down here with me. All my cameras just went whoop. <laughs> All right, so. This is it. Yeah, I, there's no way I could get to the ends there. Maybe I could approach it, but I, I can't because of the Oh, you turned your motor speed down, yeah. Let's make sure it's kind of straight. And I'm just using the original stitch line. I hope it looks good. Oh, I missed it a little bit. <laughs> that one's very easy to make, Kathleen, Kathy. I've made two of those. I've made three of those. Not on stream. Exactly, Terry. <laughs> Just trying to make sure it's nice and straight and I'm not pulling the lining at all, you know? Oh, this pin's gonna be a problem because the ball was like right across my path. Oh, 
I, this is, when this, something like this happens and I, I, I get a little bit like, oh, there's a, such a better way to do this. It just makes me want to like show, like do a PSA, but like two people will watch it, you know? So it's, it's not really worth my time. It just satisfies me. All right, so I missed it in two spots. Right here. And then um, right here and right there, which I think, uh, do I leave that? I don't like that. No one's gonna see it though. <laughs> uh, I don't know, Nancy. They might. You could probably offer Someone from the stream gave me that Sandhill sling pattern, Kathy. They had already made it, but they gave it to me because they knew I was interested in it, which is really nice of them. So I should definitely sew that. Oh man, I should definitely sew that sometime. Um, the way I did mine, Kathy, was I bound the entire inside. And, I, uh, that, and it was really easy to do that. It's a really small bag and um, it makes the bag, like the lining isn't like um, fluffy inside, you know, like this one would have been too. So. All right. So just try and get this nice and straight because then your lining won't pull away from that edge. Oh, I, I think it really pulled away there. Yeah, so let's just, let's just fix, be proactive. Fix this right here. Maybe thread and fabric selection would be something to think about during, for this step too, because I have to have two different um, thread colors going. So if your machine is a little bit picky or grouchy about hiding the bobbin thread on the right side or something, you know? If you can't get the tension right, especially when you get into all these thicknesses, your tension is going to definitely be affected sometimes. Not always, but sometimes. All right, I'm back up a little bit more. Let's pull this over a little bit more. It's kind of gapping there, so let's pull it down a little bit more, like that. Oh yeah, I'd be down for that. I like that. When are we fitting that in? <laughs> oh, I don't have any of that though. Uh, I think they recommend that on something. Is that stuff like just dissolve over time? I don't hate it. Why do you guys think I hate things? Whatever works for you. I've never used it. I didn't like, I didn't like how in five out of four patterns, they rely so heavily on that tape that you can't tell what the instruction step is because of how they write their steps. Like you have to have that tape to do it. You could start a group in the guild, that'd be fun. You know Terry's like, gosh dang it, I already have three bags. Now I want that one too. All right, I got pretty close. I'm not hand sewing that, but look at it, a little, a little off center. Let's see how it does when I, when I, um, Zip it shut too. Let's also get rid of all the pins right now. So I don't send any to hearts. This one went in a little better, I would say. I missed it right here at the beginning though. Look at that. So let me see if I can fix that a little bit. So let's, um, can I sew it with this zipped shut maybe? Yeah, let's try that. I never liked using my original stitch line. I'm gonna... All 
better be catching it in. Barely. I'm taking it though. Cool, Rachel. That sounds fun. I can post a few of the pictures. Look at, see how it's crooked? You see there's a row of stitching there? You saw nothing. Get rid of this pin. I really got a lot closer on this side. I think I should, I think I should do it on this side too, maybe. I don't know. It gets a little crooked at the ends. Maybe I'll just leave it so it can move around. Cool, that'll be a fun sew along. That's a fun bag. I wouldn't mind having one of those. I've made three and they were all gifts. Oh, it probably just got caught on something. Did you walk by it and a thread got caught on something? All right, it just doesn't need a bottom, right? I mean, who cares about the bottom? Very cute though. Let's see how the zipper works. Okay, good. All right. Uh, we are gonna do this in this part inside out though. And I did five eighths inch seam allowance, like slightly bigger on the lining and the lining <clears throat> um, will definitely be a different size in your outer even though you cut all the pieces the same. So I'm gonna stitch along this bottom edge now. Hmm, blame the weather. Yeah, the Sand Hill Sling, we were just talking about it. Rachel's gonna do a sew along in the guild for it. Did you catch that part, Kathy? I still have some leftover hardware from making that too. <laughs> Just glue some cardboard, right? I mean. <laughs> all right, I'm just gonna line up this edge at the bottom here and I'm gonna sew it all together. I think I'm gonna press the piping out away from the um, main part of the bag, which means it'll cant the seam allowances towards the center of the bag. See like that. And then I'll push the seam allowances of the lining toward the ends. And we're really gonna have to tell it, like you're gonna have to really probably push it and make it all line up. But if you do this first, the next step will be a little easier because then we won't be worried about it. It really is like slipping down here. Can you guys see okay? All right. Just nestling those seam allowances like this together, like that. <clears throat> you should make sure your bag is unzipped when you do this too. <laughs> Some zippers won't allow you to open it from the inside. And then you're in a bit of a pickle. You'll do all this and then you can't open your bag up and turn it right side out. That Those were the bags. I don't know if you remember me mentioning this, Kathy, that I used the, I think it was the Robert Kaufman. It's them that makes wax cotton, right? Of the quilting fabric companies. And now he's there, now they're doing um, garment fabrics as well, right? So, I bought their waxer canvas. It's called waxer canvas. And it's one that Noodlehead herself uses a lot in her projects. And I found it really hard to use. And I'm not a very big experienced waxed 
canvas um, sewist. I admit that. But I did find it really hard to use. Um, I've used the Al Francis waxed cotton. It's stiffer, but it's easier to use. But you could use um, canvas. You could use, what, what is this right here? This is the end. So this is going like this. Um, you could use Cordura. You could take quilting cotton and then um, make it, that scared me, make it like this, you know. Let's hope I can bind this. It's going to be thick. You made nine. Yes, Delwyn, queen of the sand hills. They are so cute, too. I've seen a picture of them. And then Noodle has, Head has the hardware on her website. And I think you can get it on Hearts Fabric. And on Hearts Fabric, you get 10% off. That's an inspiration, Del one. Nine. That makes me a little nervous that, that my thread just broke there. Because... It's about to get thicker. Maybe binding isn't a good idea. We'll see. All right, so now I'm just gonna trim it so that it's a nice even edge. And get rid of maybe some of this hoo-ha on it. Like that. No, uh, no, not at all. I, I think that the pockets could be configured for what you want because the internal pocket is really, really long. And so if you want to put something small in it, it's going to sit way down there at the bottom. So like on the ones I made, I stitched across the pocket and just made it shorter, which means you're using a lot of fabric for a long pocket that they don't have access to, but I just felt like it was more usable that way. Um, I don't even have any of those that I made, so I have to like think about it and look at the pictures maybe. I didn't take very many, to be honest. Okay, Justine, see you later. Bye. Um, and it's it because it's a drop-in lining, the lining would hang loose in there. And so I bound it and that basically that just meant I took the outer and the lining pieces and like the front and put them together, like assembled all that. And I assembled the, the thing around the, the baffle going around the whole thing and then the back. And then I turned them, I put them all right sides together and bound it and then just popped it through the zipper. So if you use a really thick fabric, it can get hard to do that. Like you're about to watch here. But other than that, it, I don't find that to be hard. Plus, like, binding the inside of that, no one's going to see that. <laughs> so even if you do a bad job, it's perfect practice for it. This is actually pretty thick for this width of the binding. This is the binding I picked, by the way. Oh, I got to pre prepare my bottom. See, this is what I was talking about. I didn't fuse this like, like that, you know? Like, like all to the pieces. So it's floating around in there. I think I need to get rid of this little wrinkle. All right, Sydney, see you later. This almost feels like it's a wrinkle Uh, only in the fabric, but it is on the this interfacing, so we're going to get rid of it because that would stay forever if I didn't get rid of it right now. Let that warm up a little bit. I'm wondering about the seam allowance for this bottom. I think the Pellon 70, um, like I really like the soft and stable stuff because I think it gives a nice finish, you know, it kind of poofs up your bag. 
uh, but it's kind of thick. Plus I did piping, you know. All right, so I think I'm just gonna let it like sit in there like this. <laughs> I need to mark my centers still, but I'm just kind of thinking about it. You know? I'm just gonna sew around the edge a quarter inch. Okay. Now I'm gonna mark all the centers very, very essential. I'm actually gonna do it with the, yeah, with the right side out when I fold it like this. So now I'm, a, I'm deviating from the instructions. I saw other people do this exact same thing though, so I feel heartened. And other people bound the entire inside of the bag, which was what I was originally proposing. When you fold it this way, make sure you line up these centers here before you mark these centers down the end, because it's really hard to find the corner to line up since it's rounded. All right, and then this one too, line up center. All right, so when I used to do this for my bags, I never pre-sewed them together. You can if you want, and I'm thinking about it myself. Um, and the reason I never did that is because on the pre-sew seam that I did, if you did that, like sewing this to the bottom first, you run the risk of it showing if you don't include it in your light last seam, right? So if you get, get a little crooked and when you're sewing binding on, you can't see your seam that you just sewed. So it's, it is possible that can happen. This is so thick. Ooh, I hope I can bind this. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? All right, I'm just checking my seam allowance here because, um, because, I'm checking my seam allowance. May, we may get some tucks. I think it's gonna be okay. Looks okay. So if this were, I like a rounded bottom, but if it's square, you could have done the, the front to the bottom, to the back, and then you'd, you'd set your ends in. All right, here's the binding I picked. It's a little bright. Let me turn it down for you guys. So does anybody have like, I forgot that this weekend is like the last hurrah, so to speak, of, of summer. So I imagine there's a lot of people out of town this weekend. No one's gonna see this, so uh, it doesn't matter what side you start on. Let's see, I think that I want to finish on, what's gonna be easier? What's gonna be easier to sew this on? I think it might be easier to sew from this side. So we're gonna sew from this side. And if your clips aren't gonna be strong enough to hold, you could just tack it in these four places, but I'm just gonna start. So I fold back, this is how you do binding in, a round, in the round, right? You fold back one end. We don't have to like seam it at the end or anything. And then I'm a big proponent of smashing your bag. If you ever buy one of my patterns and you watch my video, I'm gonna tell you to smash the heck out of your bag. 
and it's going to be okay. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Oh, hmm. he does. My husband gets a three day weekend and I always have Mondays off. So I'm always like, I never get three day weekends. <laughs> I'd have to take today off to get a three day weekend. But I'm here where I want to be. <laughs> mm -mm. Okay. Let's rethread. Should I maybe change my needle? Let's change the needle. Oof, this thickness. I'm, maybe I'll even change to an 18. Here's my, you want to see my drawer? This is what's in my drawer. Three layers of bobbin cases, or bobbins, I mean. What are you doing? You were the one plaguing me the other day. And all my needles. Put 18 in. And then my collection of throat plates. These are my new throat plates. It's probably never a good sign that you collect throat plates. Oh. Oh no, Kathleen. I'm sorry. That's a bummer. Kathy, sorry. <laughs> that needle definitely needed to be changed. I kind of figured maybe because um, we've been doing all these different materials. And um, I was doing some zipper samples for the zipper class this month and I was sewing through a lot of zipper. So. All right. Let's, get, let's clear the decks. I still haven't sewn the strap. Not funny. Or the handles. <laughs> we still haven't made the handles. <laughs> Let's get the show on the road. All right, let's do it. It's pretty thick. Ooh, you hear that? Oof. Please tell me I didn't make a bad choice doing binding. The thing is, I'm doing, I have to do a quarter inch seam because my binding width. So, there you have it. All right, here's my first thick seam. My backup plan is that I'll just, I could sew the lining right sides together Oof, why am I nervous? <laughs> Here's a random crud, what the heck? No way to treat your, how do you, don't you use it? That is always what's in my drawer, nothing ever else. Yeah, I'm already off a little bit here. I'm already off by a lot? No, we're not, no, uh, 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 we're not off a lot. No, 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 no. I'm not taking that. Oh, I don't wanna pre-sew this, but I hate ovals. I used to have this bag uh, called the clear wristlet in my line. And it was a way for people to take their knitting um, and be portable. So it hung off their wrist holding their yarn ball while they knit. And apparently this is something that has existed for like 150 years in the knitting world. These like, and they were like these cases that held your yarn, you know? So I didn't invent the wheel or anything. Um, and my original one had a round top and a round bottom. And I would get like 
of course, people thinking they're funny, like comments that it looked like a toilet paper roll holder. So then I decided to change that and I made the bottom a squared off bottom. And it was also because it was so hard to sew that round bottom on. It was cool, but I only left it on the top. I think I can't make that match. No. Oh yeah, it was the maritime, that's right. I would have liked so many notches on this. I would have liked one at the corners, the rounded corners. You know, let's see, can I get this? Shoot, I might pre-sew this. Then it'll also be like mashed down. Cause uh, I'm not getting that to mash, there's no way. I'm getting irritated. <laughs> this bag is just like, come on. The section of your thread cone has a thread all twisted up. Ah, see? Yeah, did it, um, fold on itself a twist. I think that happens sometimes like say you're sewing along and for some reason one layer of thread overlaps another thread and just for the briefest of seconds it hesitates, right? Because it kind of there's just like the slightest amount of resistance. And then what happens is you start sewing and then you stop and then it kind of goes and it and it folds back on itself and then um and then it twists like a skein of yarn. It plies itself, you know? You know all about that, Rachel. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tack this end right here. I hate pre-sewing because it, it's, it's just problematic later on, but at least I have my pink thread on now. Can I get that? Yeah, see, that's gonna be fine. Yeah, exactly what I mean. Yeah, exactly. I'm a little nervous right there because that's where the piping is in that corner. I, I, oof, I, I don't think you should follow anything I've done on this pattern. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. It happens to me too. It'll happen too when, um, on this machine, like say I'm sewing really fast and then there's a, some, somewhere along the line, a little bit of resistance and it'll yoink it, the, the thread spool. Yeah. All right. People are doing this with like leather and fake leathers and stuff. Crazy. Oh, it's so far off. <laughs> hmm. Um, I did, Kathy. That's the one I'm trying to sell. I have a Juki now. I love the baby lock. It was great. It just did both. It did cover stitch and serger. And so converting for the stream just wasn't ideal. I want to sew this. Oh my God. I, 
I could bind it, but I just don't feel like that's very realistic for people. Mark all the pieces. Yeah, that's a good point, Jessica. I, that is actually a good point because it's one of the reasons we did a lot of vinyl is because it makes things one layer. Yeah, just do your notches at the table. They tell you to do it in the instructions, Heidi. Don't worry. They, they're, they're, they tell you to do that. There's like a whole step about it. Hmm. Oh. If I don't match that, it'll be, it'll make my bag wonky, you know? It needs to be right here. It needs to be a bigger seam allowance, that's why. And yeah, exactly, it stands on its own. Yeah, I, I really liked being able to use one layer, but one of the reasons I didn't want to continue on was I didn't want to keep using vinyl. It's true, Rachel, I know, but I also, you know, I went astray right here with their instructions. And I, I, it's fine. Like, it's really the, the thickness at the corners stresses me out a little bit, because look at that. It's pretty thick, even for my industrial. Oh, nice, Terry. Deep breath, I did. I don't, I'm okay right, well, I did have a snack before. I just don't like showing a bag in a bad light or a pattern in a bad light. Like, this is me, <laughs> not the pattern. And I was trying to be helpful and doing other things and I just really want the lining to be like plastered to the sides. It's not even my bag. Can I clip the straight edge to coax it around the corner? Um, you're right. I mean, that would actually release it, but I get really nervous about that when it's like this thick. I also don't feel like I could clip it very well. And thanks for saying something. I appreciate it. The truth is the truth though. I need a bigger seam allowance. Let's take off my binding here so it stops, um, you know, twisting around. I want the lining to be smooth. Otherwise it's gonna be all like poofy inside, right? You know, it's gonna hang loose and, and it's gonna be hard to see your stuff in there. And so I just wanted to show a method where the lining was smooth across against the bag. I mean, look at that. It's nice, it's smooth against the bag right now. We like that, we like that. We, we, as people who use bags, know how useful that is. And if you're doing a diaper bag, you know, a bottomless pit of sticky stuff and whatever. So when does the sling is, I don't know, it's Rachel's, Rachel's heading that up. <laughs> I think you guys can host Zooms and everything in there. I'm not sure. But if you need, I can set zooms up. I got an easy win layer of the shorts. You just freaking jinxed me, lady. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah, those shorts will be pretty satisfying. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna tack this on with a bigger seam allowance. It wasn't meant to be sewn with a quarter inch seam, and so that's why it's not lining up. And uh, doing curves is obviously going to make it even harder. You could give yourself more notches if you want. Um, especially, like, I, what I would do is measure the width of the front piece right here, this part right here between your seams. Measure that and mark that on your, your bottom. Then you would at least have some corners to go by, you know? something. I need that to be right there. Can you do it? I don't know. I 
I got it. Okay, I barely got it. I may have a tuck, but. Yeah, right, Michelle? Exactly. The, I think she so, sells the zippers. Uh, you can go to hearts too. Oh man, I've caught the, the stiffener in here, which just makes it even thicker. I don't know guys, I don't think this is a good idea. I'm, I'm gonna stop this, this isn't a good idea. We're gonna, we're just gonna go back to the original way they have you do it. I'm just gonna, what's the term? Lick my wounds. <laughs> you should tell her. There you go. I have zipper by the yard on my website. If you want cream, you can put two zipper poles on it. She doesn't have zippers. Yeah, that's the thing is like when her, after she launches something, it's not really readily available after a while. All right. Tell me a story. You know, who used to sell kits? Oh, but it was for jackets. Never mind. I was going to say Maker's Fabric. All right. I have a bit of seam ripping to do. Good thing I'm an excellent seam ripper. So I don't know how this is going to play out with um, this bottom now. So that, you know what I think I'm going to do? Oof. I think I'm going to cut. See, this is another reason why the other way wouldn't work for me because I didn't fuse this stabilizer piece in here to the fabric, right? Here we go. There it is. I could not find that edge there. And so now that these are going to be two separate bags, I can't put that stabilizer in there. Oh, I'm not ripping this. We're not pressing our luck right now. Hmm, I want to pick out a Sand Hill sling. Shoot, just recut this and re interface everything. It'll be faster. She only has coral left. Oh, that's funny. I have a lot of coral by the yard, too. My set, like in my personal stash. Bought it for that Blanca flight suit. Damn, I, I should have been wearing my Blanca flight suit last weekend, you guys. I had the weekend of cactus. Oh my gosh. So this really huge, I posted a picture in the guild recently of our prickly pear, which was about, it's about ripe right now. And you, you can pick them and eat them and stuff. I don't, um, they're, they're, they're fine, but um, they're beautiful right now. Like that's just, it's just such a striking thing to see, you know, in the yard and um, I think because it's been dry and because all the fruit are on the prickly pear, and this is a really old one, uh, it broke. And so we've been wanting to like trim it and make it a little bit um, like just a little less. It's just like going out into the path and we were going to like saw it off in one spot. 
Um, and then I walked by it and this huge part of it just broke off. So we had to clean that up. We had to use a tractor because we can't touch it. And it, even though it's not that bad, well, as I was the next weekend when we finally went to do it, I was like, all right, we're going to trim up some of this other cactus in here while we're here. And so, um, so, uh, I was doing that and all of a sudden I felt something on my belly. There were like 25 pieces of cactus in me and on my top of my pants. It was just like, it was almost like someone just stamped me with all this cactus. I was like, oh shoot, we had to stop everything. And Michael had to take it out. And this is Michael when he's using the tweezers. He was like this. I was like, why are you shaking? He's like, I don't know. <laughs> I was like, stop shaking. <laughs> the whole thing was just so funny. So then after that, you know, I got, I had to change gloves, change my whole outfit. Um, I was wearing my like Sequoia cargo pants, you know, with the knee pads and I, and, and stuff. And then, um, uh, I went back out there and did some more, but I just kept finding it on me everywhere. Like I would find all of a sudden like eight of them stuck in me. You can go like this. It's like acupuncture needles. You can do this and it'll just move with your skin, but you can feel it and you can't see them. They're so, such a strange color. So, um. Oh man. And then after that, after a bit, I was like, all right, I have to stop doing this. This is it going to, this is, this is like, I've reached cactus overload. <laughs> so then I helped Mike. So then I had to change my clothes again and help and do change my gloves, change my clothes, everything. Like I, ch I had three outfits on to garden for two hours in our yard <laughs> because I decided to get rid of a little cactus. It was like, <sighs> You know, and it's like, the t we don't have much time because it's hot. So, <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh. I, I mean, I love where we live. I love our yard. And the cactus, I've, you know, they're not my favorite thing in the world, but I, I really appreciate their kind of their own beauty. Some of them are just angry, though. And I just don't really want a lot of the angry stuff. So, I'm just trying to keep up on it, you know. And, um, you know, the rattlesnakes will hang out in areas that don't get disturbed very much. So they'll start, like, camping out there, you know? So. <laughs> you made the coral fabric. All right, so. I have this little doohickey. Where's the doohickey? The doohickey. I'll do this. There we go. Okay. Almost. Oh, that's smart. She could put two pairs of gloves on. Wait, are your rose gauntlet gloves there for... See, I didn't think about looking for rose gloves. I have cactus gloves, and they worked, but the, the, the canvas gauntlet part there, that got saturated with needles, and so I have to spend time and get them all out. But the, the, the leather themselves, that, that's okay. There, there's cactus in them, but they're not touching me yet. Um, uh, oh, it's called Seam Fix. It has a built-in seam ripper, which I've never used. And it looks like a little ice cream cone. Mine's starting to rip, unfortunately. But it's, it's like an eraser. It's literally an eraser. Yeah. And it just grabs the, the threads that are like stuck in the seam. Kind of helpful, you know? All right, one more seam. You guys can ditch me if you want. <laughs> Just think of me here. No. <laughs> Which one is my... my... This is it right here, right? That's why there was no guarantees on the short stream. 
It, w it could be a good oilcloth one. Especially if you bind it. Because then you, it, it'll, it'll be, I think it'll be less hard on your hands to, to sew it. Oh, up past the elbow. Oh. Maybe I'll look for rose gloves. I don't know if they, if that would be enough. Because I think the cactus stuff is for small things. Oh yeah, I bet that steam ripper does work pretty good. All right. It's just a seam ripping ASMR. Waterproof canvas, cool. I should see if my mom wants one because she still likes my bright green canvas that I used and I could make her one out of that. Okay. Oh, here we go. This is the, where I should be, right here. ASMR. Um, it's, it stands for like autonomous sensory something something. Basically, it's a whole genre of um, audio content in usually video format. format. And, um, well, we were Elena, but Sarah me chickened out. Um, and it, it's basically designed to be very pleasing to the ears, but it'll be, but it's also supposed to create a sensation of tingling on your skin because of the audio. And so I'm using it jokingly, but it is a huge genre and I would be careful searching for it because you might stumble upon some ASMR that you might. I would just say it's not safe for work sometimes. <laughs> so, um, but usually it's like someone like whispering into the microphone, you know, really quietly and tapping their fingernails, that kind of thing. It's, I can't handle it. Like it's way too much. I'm very much into audio stuff. I love voices. I love podcasts. I love audio books. Um, Heck, I like playing video games with certain people because I just love hearing their voice, you know? Like, I, I'm really into it. I can't handle ASMR at all. Like, it's too too much for me. So sometimes when you see me post ASMR sewing videos, it's just me sewing and I don't talk at all, which is probably a huge relief to some people. And um, you just see me sewing. You, I, my face isn't even visible. And it's just basically kind of a play on that whole genre. Yeah, I got a little too nervous about it. And it's really hard to sew a seam with a curve already. Like, I don't mind doing it. I do it all the time. You guys see me do stuff like that all the time. I don't mind. And on the whole. But on the bottom of a bag, when um, the thicknesses are building up, it gets a little, little dicey and, and inaccurate. Yeah, I think that's bad ASMR to some people, and some might like it. That's why I say, be careful what you search for. There's like people um, squishing clay, stuff like that. They're always looking for something that is kind of cool. Yeah, exactly. It's like, for me, it's too, too much audio stimulation. And I just think pe some people have taken it into more of a, a realm that has departed from the audio sensory experience and there's a lot more visual happening sometimes too. <laughs> I'm probably just making you want to Google it even more, but I'm, I, fair warning, I warned you. All we do now is like lo-fi version of your ASMR version. Ooh, 
I wonder, um, you know, like now that um, um, Lo-Fi Girl is free, could I put it on right now, Elena? Do you think? Because we could put that on. That'd be nice. I listen to that a lot. Because earlier this year, Lo-Fi Girl said, hey, all of our mu music is free. You can use it in your videos. Um, I don't even think you have to give them credit. I did in the Ask a Zoe Question show. Does Alexa yell at, if you yell at her? I don't know, I don't have Alexa. Yeah. You did, Amy, yeah. Right, we really do, Elena. There's so many lo-fi channels out there. But now that lo-fi girl's free, I just don't know if I can like play their actual stream. Like right now, could I put their YouTube channel on in the background? Um, is that okay? I know you can download their music and use it for free. All their artists that they use are, are compliant with that. You won't get a copyright strike. So I actually think you can because they couldn't, they, they're not going to police source, like if you're using their stream or not, you know what I mean? Lo-Fi Girl is a, um, here I'll put a link to it because I love it so much. It's just music. Here you go. Um, here we go. Check that out. It's just, a, they, they basically are like catering to the studying crowd, but it's just nice music in the background so that you can study, right? I use it in the background when I'm working all the time. <laughs> and there's a, a, there's a, a hundred channels like that out there. But I feel like they're the ones that really um, popularized it and got big. And it is a live chat, and the live chat is kooky. So I just hide the chat. <laughs> it's not bad. It's just, like, really funny. Like, two people will be talking to each other, and the other 7,000, you know, people are listening. And then there's... Um, like four people talking at everybody, but nobody's talking to them. <laughs> you know, this is really, it's really funny. Okay. This is getting good enough for me, but I do not like all these little threads. Bane of my existence. You know what? This is the best way. I knew I, th I was just thinking like, I thought of a good way to do this the other day. Look at this. <laughs> yeah, it really is, Elena. Gotta go. All right, Sue. Have a nice night. Sleep well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't do it in an instructional, Rachel. I agree. People really go get mad at people for putting music in their instructional videos. Yeah, I just hide the chat. It says, hide chat. I'm like, okay. <laughs> the chat is just kind of like off in left field sometimes. I'm like, shouldn't you be studying? No. <laughs> yeah, I just don't sometimes have that handy, you know, Amy? Like, I don't want to carry all that to work. I do have a little speaker here. Bye, Heidi. See you later. Right, I know. Why didn't I think of this sooner? Why did I not think of this sooner? It does a pretty good job. Okay. Oh, oh, that was so satisfying. All right, well, sometimes you just got to know when to pivot, you know? Yeah, it's so true, Elena. So many people don't mix it. Kind <laughs> of like our chat. What are you talking about? 
<laughs> How many threads do you leave in there? I can get really, really um, kind of compulsive about removing threads. Right now I'm feeling pretty impatient because I know how boring this probably is. So um, I kind of want to just leave some of them in here. All right. I need a new paper. I'll, I'll peel one more paper, do one more time, and then that's it. No, I chickened out, Justine. I'm going back to the original directions. I'm trusting. Well, I knew that their way would work. I'm just going to do it that way. It's going to be a loose lining in there. I really hoped that I could do it the other way. But with the piping, it's just a little bit harrowing. So I actually don't think it would be very helpful for people to see it that way. If you didn't have the foam in there, like you're doing something like... Um, a bag that's stiff enough that you didn't have to use the foam. Or maybe you didn't do the piping. Ooh. Uh, then maybe it would be a better option for that. All right, we're getting a lot of threads now. I bet Lauren Mor Mor Mormino, I can't remember her name. Um, she would be a good one to watch sew this bag. I'll bet she's sewn it. Right? Does she sew everybody's bags or she have her own bag designs? She's a really good bag maker. Okay. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> can't. Oh, I totally agree with you, Elena, about the music. Exactly. You guys live for it. All right. So I still have pink on. So we're going to sew the bottom pink first. And let's just hope the seam goes together better this time. <laughs> Make sure your zipper's open. Otherwise, you're not going to have a fun time. Ooh, look at all those threads that got in there. Ooh, sneaky little buggers. Come here, you. Don't you dare slip between my interfacing and my lining. This interfacing is supposed to be fused. Oh my God. Okay. Good thing my Zoom got canceled. I think there's nothing wrong with rage quitting for a chocolate break. Um, my only advice is if you can muster it up, at least get it back to ground zero. <clears throat> no, because I can just pull it through the, the bag, right? Do I have to leave an opening now? I can do this, right? Oh my gosh, you guys are making me nervous. I'm, I, I'm not trusting anything I'm doing now. Please tell me I can do this. Can I not do this? I just I have to like turn this around. Don't you love it when streams go really good to get go good? All right, this one I can. See, look, I can just do it right now. Right? And cuz that's right sides together. So if I do the 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 outer, I'm going to do the outer first. But I think we need to do a piece of foam. Um, I don't think my camera is set up over there, but I'm going to turn it on real quick. What's over there? Nothing secret. I don't have secrets. <laughs> A 
This is the fabric I'm thinking of doing for the shorts today. This is a dress I made. Here's the shorts. I could do the stabilizer. Do you think that would be better? Not foam? Hmm. I could stitch this like to the foam. You know? Is this too much, you think? Hmm. There's still so many threads. I don't know what I'm doing now. <laughs> no, this isn't what I wanted to sew this to. Oh my gosh, you guys. Oh, I'm not doing good now. Wow, I'm really getting flustered. I just thought I sewed this to the foam. How did I switch that? <laughs> what the heck? What the heck? That surprised me. Where'd that fabric go? I knew I'd need this fabric. I knew I would need this fabric. I'm such a ding bat. Okay, Terry, no problem. Well, Pat, what camera did I put on? Okay, <laughs> I was like, I don't even know. I'm actually not as um, flustered as, I, as it seems. Don't worry about me. <laughs> I just can't believe I did that though because I was, I just knew I wanted to do it to the foam so I was really surprised I did not do that. It's kind of crazy. I'm just gonna start this piece over. You know, why not? Oh, there's water everywhere. Okay, you're not warm up enough. I get it, I get it. We'll let you warm up. I'll go read chat while it's warming up. <laughs> I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Oh gosh, I mean, things like happen like this so often and the bag looks amazing no matter what right so it's gonna be fine it is one of those things where I think when I start trying to hurry a little that's when I really start making mistakes so yeah I don't know if foam's a good idea I, the reason I added the foam was because 
I know the bottom of the bag needs something, but the stiffener, um, the stiffener, I didn't get a way to um, glue the stiffener to the fabric. I'm not a huge fan of doing that anyway. <laughs> you have the sound off. Um, I just sewed through the um, bottom. I wanted to attach the stiffener to a piece of foam and I was gonna, I laid it out, I put it on top of the foam and then I don't know how I had, I switched it. I don't know how I switched it. So I'm just recutting it. I'm waiting for my iron to, to warm up. So let's go check it out. And I'm just gonna recut it just so I don't have to seam rip it and I don't have to deal with all those holes, you know? Let me make sure this isn't pouring water again. Because it wants to pour water right now. All right, I'm gonna go from this side. So I'm gonna sew it so that the outer and the inner are separate. But I already sewed my zipper shut. So I'm legit wondering if it's possible. Because I don't think it is. I don't think it is, I don't think it's possible to do both. I should just stick to my own bags. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm gonna use my rotary knife real quick. It's all set up right here. I know you can't see me, but I'm just gonna do it quick. Let's hope, I, I know I didn't cut that foam piece out perfectly. Let's hope it's good enough though. All right, here we go. Yeah, that's what I think too, Kathy. Yeah, I think um, I'll be able to put the outer on, but I don't think I can put the inner on. I think I closed that opportunity off by stitching the zipper shut. Because the key is to assemble them separately and then drop them in. Well, at least we learned what not to do, right? And I'm going to skip the stiffener. I just want to skip it at this point. I'm going to attach this to the bag, the bottom though. I know the foam isn't ideal, but it, it'll, it'll act pretty close to what that stabilizer was. I really love how the fabric doesn't shift on this because it shifts on the stabilizer. Yeah, so. I can do this one. But yeah, I don't think I can do that lining. I'm a little nervous about it. <laughs> Where's Jeremy? <laughs> Rookie mistake, man. Maybe I should just stick to fitting pants. No, I want to do anything, anything but that right now. <laughs> you know what was really cool was, um, Last night I learned that there is a, a Reddit and someone mentioned my channel in a nice way and I was like, oh God, thank goodness, because it was in the craft snark <laughs> post. <laughs> and I was like, oh no. All right, let's see if I can do this. It's thick. I still think I'm gonna struggle with how thick this is. And lining it up. Like I think it's still gonna be really hard. Let's not see here. Let 
Let's see. Well, it's a lot easier to sew this together now. So I could take off, I could undo the zipper stitching. It won't be, it, well, it won't be too hard because we have the pink bobbin, so we'd, we can see it. So we could do that. Would you guys have put piping around the bottom? You don't do that, right? I don't think it needs it to keep it its shape. You know, sometimes you, you think use things like that to kind of keep its shape. I've hit the big time. <laughs> Better yet, it was in a craft snark, a snark thing, and I and I and I wasn't the one being snark, so thankfully. I was pretty happy about that too. I was like, oh gosh. <laughs> I, I don't, I'm not on Reddit. And I've tried to look at it, but you know, because I'm not really on there, I don't really know how it works. And I don't know, I just don't know how it works to be honest. But um, I know there's a lot of people in the sewing community that find it really valuable. I'm just gonna get rid of some of these threads. All right, Kathy, what do you think? You sound like you know what's going on here. <laughs> All right, so now we have our bag, right? Let's check it before we go any further, right? All right, it looks pretty good. So now it's getting this bottom on without a seam to pull it through. So I could pop out a side seam here, right? That might be a good way to go. Or I could pull off one whole zipper. I think actually that's the better plan. So I'm gonna pull off one big zipper thing. Which one's the one I sewed twice? I think this one looks pretty good to take out right here. This one was the easier one to sew. So let's pull this one out. And uh, we will, I promise we'll get through this bag. But I think at the end of the day, you're not gonna wanna give it away if you're making it as a gift for someone. <laughs> I'm gonna take this seam out without all the threads because it'll be um, less messy. Ooh, now I'm getting kinda hungry. I brought Thai green curry though, so that'll be good. All right, tell me a story, tell, entertain us all. This month, um, the skill building session in the guild, if you're in the journeyist or master group, is all on zipper closures for pants. Oh, I don't have one, Debbie, I'm sorry. I don't have a video for that. So you're not going crazy, just so you know. But someone's proposing doing a sew along in the guild. We were just talking about it today. I don't know if you're in the guild or if you were interested at all in joining. It would be free to do that though. Uh, you can join for free. <clears throat> There's a lot, you can get a lot out of the guild being free, in the free membership. It's just in the paid groups that we do skill building sessions. And there are workshops where you can come and bring whatever you're working on. You can just work on it silently. You can ask a question. It doesn't matter. And no questions too um, big or small. Yeah, no way you can't find it. Oh, nice, Barbara. So um, someone was going to make a group later today. And the, the, it'll be like in, on the left side of the screen in the guild. It says groups and you go there and then there's some free ones. There's like a capsule wardrobe one. There's a Australia, New Zealand one. There's one on critical role. 
You have joined? Great. Yeah, if you want to join our little sew along, people are buying all the materials to do it. And um, we could do a couple of zooms or something, and I can show the way I did mine where I finished it. The way I planned to finish this bag, but this bag kicked my butt. So. You missed the first part of the question, but if you don't have an outside but Yeah, okay, I think I did read that already. Yeah, I think you're right. I kind of knew, I was like, ooh, I think I just painted myself into a corner. You kind of know, like you, when you've done enough bags, you know, even if you're not exactly sure why you can't do something, sometimes, you know, you get so bogged down in thinking about a, a three-dimensional object inside out all the time that all of a sudden you'll be like, wait, I know what I'm about to do isn't possible, but somehow we still try. <laughs> we still try because we have to understand why it doesn't work. It's like uh, when you do a one piece facing on an armhole on a garment and I will get messages from people that are like, I've sewn this all right sides together, but I can't turn it right side out, you know, and they don't have a front or back opening. You just, you just can't, it's impossible. It's not a bad, like, it's, it's not that it's wrong. It's, it's, it's impossible. It's physics. All right, um, I, that's all gone. Oh, so nice, so much nicer when you just pull out the thread like that, right? Okay. All right, so now I can sew this right sides together. This just gave me a literal heart attack just now, seeing this in there. I was like, oh, did I just sew the pink to the bottom? <laughs> Okay, here's my pink. All right, so you have to go through the hole like this. Like that. You have to pull it through that hole. That's the trick. And now let's do our last seam. I still have all these little blue threads right here. And this little piece of interfacing that kind of got away from me. All right, wish me luck. Right, Nancy? I've done that so many times, especially when I was learning pattern drafting and sewing, and I would uh, sew it in paper at my sewing machine. <laughs> or with a stapler. I did a lot of that with staplers. So there was one design room I worked in where we didn't have a sewing machine in there for a while, and so I would just sew things together with a stapler. I had to, would have to wait till the production floor went home for the day at two o'clock, and then I could go and sneak down on the machine. They finally got us a machine. It's like design room around a sewing machine. It's so weird. Yeah, exactly. Pin or clip it. My little my my lining is a little I think stretched out, so it's it's a little hard right now to sew. And I'm gonna allow the tucks. Sometimes you just gotta allow the tucks. This isn't mine. It's definitely one of those things where it's probably right now done is better than perfect. So I don't uh, hurt it any further, you know? So yeah. Okay. Where is it? Right here, right here. Yep. We just have our handles left. Let's see, get this to the center. All 
right, there we go. No tooks. You really gotta finesse it. I'm gonna trim this down. Kind of messily. There's a lot of tucks on this one. This, this is the end. I had all those tucks. They won't be very visible on the other side. And some of those you can kind of um, smooth out by not unstitching it, like kind of. Um, rubbing over the, the like stitches. I will sometimes scratch out tucks or like things that want to be tucks. This is so thick. Ooh. Where's one of those tucks? You know, like you can sit here and pull on it like this and smooth it and it's gone. So before you start taking out seams, when you have a tuck, try and redistribute the fabric in there. You can probably get rid of most of them. All right. Okay, we gotta get rid of any of these little threads in here. We don't really want those to live in there, right? Some threads, get rid of all these because now they're about to be sealed in there like a mummy's crypt. <laughs> so dramatic. <laughs> all right. Okay. Here we go. This is why my invention, the seam ripper vacuum, this, it would come in clutch right now. With the light at the end of the seam ripper. All right, so we, now we're gonna stitch this down, kind of like I did earlier. Oh, but we need to Switch out our thread. Yeah, you ever went, I, I sometimes wonder, cause I know like Lexi one time was like, hey, I, I've been meaning to make these Hudson pants for my friend. Can I, can I sponsor your stream? She works at Hearts Fabric <laughs> and I was like, I don't care. So she sent me a project and Hearts was fine with it. <laughs> Oh, I would love that, Nancy. The tucks are a design feature. I would love that. I, I mean, I used to, to write the directions and, well, and all the text specs, you know, for some of my pack. Like, I, one of the places I worked, I had um, three or four technical designers under me, and they did, they wrote the specs, but I gave them the information, you know, and then they would put it into the package and make it all pretty, you know, um, and then, and cohesive, you know, but the place, I really like it when I get to develop my own, you know, specs, pa spec sheet packages and directions. It's really, really satisfying. I know a lot of designers don't like doing it and I would do it for them sometimes because I don't mind. I liked it. Oh, is it strong enough? Because it would have, it, it also needs to have like this little tip so you can kind of like do this and it's like and it sucks it out as you do it, you know? It's, 
it may, it's I, ideally, you know, you're seam ripping and it would suck them out as it goes, but I don't think that's actually um, realistic. I think it would have to be a vacuum with one of these at the end. Magical magnet sounds great. We're down. <laughs> so now our wish list is we would like a magical thread magnet and we want a dedicated home sewing machine for buttonholes. That's all it has to do, just buttonholes. But it does it perfectly every, every time. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna turn this inside out a little bit to do this. I think it'll just be easier because then you, because I, I don't have a free arm. Like they say, if you have a free arm, it uh, this is a great time to use it. I don't have one and I don't have the capability. So I have to uh, turn my bag, get rid of these threads while we're at it. And then we can stitch this down with it right side up. So if you don't have a free arm, ow, this is how you have to do it if you want to keep your sanity. But by all means, do what works for you. All right. Oh, this stuff, oh, that's right, I stopped up here. Awesome. Okay. I have pink thread in the bobbin, right? Yeah, Gabby. I, I mean, they don't all, you know, go away sometimes, but for the most part, I'm just making sure I have pink bobbin thread on. All right, we're good. Especially on a curve like that, where there's a little bit of bias you can kind of use. <laughs> Finesse is the name of the game. Oof, you know who I would love to see make this bag is Elena. Elena, are you here? I want to. I want Elena to make this bag because um, I I want her to do her her analysis of what it would cost to make it. That's what Elena does on Instagram. Is she always has this like the realistic cost to make her garment, like labor for cutting, sewing, the fabric, all of it. And I love, I love reading those. All right. Mischief managed. That was a heck of a lot of mischief. <sighs> In and out of a nap. Oh, I love that. I love listening to streams and sleeping. Sorry. You're so intimidated by bag. You're a really good seamstress or sewist. I meant to say seamster and I said seamstress. The unsew machine, nah, 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 nah. Nancy, if you're wishing for anything like that, you should wish for a cutting machine. The automatic zipper attachment. <laughs> All right, see, this is what I mean. See how the zip, the, the lining is loose in here? Whatever. Because it just doesn't really want to sit in the corners like it would if it were attached at the bottom. It really doesn't actually. Okay. Handles. And then you'll be rid of me. All right, so we have our handles and we have the um, strap, the long strap. Oh, cool, Lena. I did not know what tailgate parties were, and when I was buying my van that I used when I had my, my business where I would go to like trade shows and stuff, they kept talking about tailgate parties and blah, 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 and I was like, uh-huh, okay. I, was, I know better now to be like, just pretend like you know what he's talking about. And then my husband afterward was some, said something like, man, tailgate parties must be really popular. And I'm like, what is that? <laughs> okay. So we have our, I pieced my strap together here because I didn't have a long enough piece of fabric. So I'm just gonna piece this together now. All right. 
Okay, and then we're gonna take these over to the um, iron. Bound back. <laughs> Come on, you guys. We can't ask for the moon. As soon as we had those things, we would be like, but yeah, we want these other things. Okay. So we're gonna make our handles on the strap and we're gonna fold these in half. These are gonna be easy. This is the dessert. Dessert sounds pretty good right now. I may have to go somewhere after this stream. <laughs> so I fold in half lengthwise. I fold these two together to meet at that um, lengthwise crease. It's just a guide for now. Unless you're using webbing. And then one last time. You want these all very equal so that it folds up and they stack right up on top of each other at the end here. So there's one. A little ironing ASMR. Last one, big one. Sorry, I can't see chat, just so you know. Get this really nice and flat if you pieced it together. And hopefully you pieced it together like a diagonal because it'll, see how it offsets? Here's a seam right here. It's probably too dark, but here's a seam here and a seam here. They're offset and that will reduce the bulk and it'll make your strap um, a lot more consistent in thickness when you do that. If you have to piece it. And it'll still glide in your hardware and stuff like that. This is a really long strap, I have to say. I think we made ours 44 inches. This is 60. <laughs> Something like that. I can't remember. But it would fit a lot of people if they're doing them like a messenger style wearing it. One more fold. Hope it's not too dark. I bet it is. Get those little corners. I 
Oh, cool, Lena, you do? That's cool. Let's lighten this up a little bit. Yeah, it really could, Pam. Your ham holder arrived. It's a bit big for my homemade ham. So now I'm getting ready to make a bigger ham. <laughs> Things you only hear in a sewing stream. <laughs> That's what sold you, Aisha, on it? I've put a steel wool inside of um, pin cushions before and gravel at the bottom to make them nice and heavy, you know? I was always told that the little strawberry on the tomato pin cushion was a sharpener for your needles. I've always wanted to open an old one up to see if that was true. Hi, Ellen. How's it going? It's it's pretty big. <laughs> it's pretty big. I mean, you wouldn't want a much bigger bag for a diaper bag because then you would put way too much in it. You know what I mean? A boob ham? You mean a boob? <laughs> Well, if you end up watching this video from the beginning, Ellen, uh, just know that um, I went a little off the rails on this thing. I was trying to make it a certain way and I gave up in the end. So I pretty much followed the instructions. So watch it at double speed. <laughs> I don't think bugs are attracted to sawdust. Uh, but uh, if you fill things like bean bags, you know, sometimes people will make bean bags for pattern weights and things. If you fill those with like corn or beans, then you will attract mice and rodents. So bigger than bugs. But I think sawdust is actually a, a pretty neutral fiber. To fill it with fiber. Literally pulled that thread out and probably can't even see it, but then it just like went boop right across my seam. It's just plaguing me now. All right. I run out of bobbin. Don't you dare. Just Phoenix, please, okay? You know what kind of day we've had. We're not running out of bobbing right now. I trust you, I trust you. Come on. We're double checking. Plenty of thread. <laughs> yeah. You tend to overfill. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty big. Here, I'll show you full screen. I think my I think my microphone works here. 
So this would be the bag on me. That gives you kind of a, a reference, right? It's bigger than Mary Poppins bag, I would say. Does that help? Yeah, oh, really it will? I didn't know that would sharpen your pins. I have crushed walnut shells because that's actually a, um, a byproduct of one of the agricultural things grown here. Yeah, I guess it could be an overnight bag. All right, we need a three bar slider. So we have this three bar slider and this. I'll probably send this stuff back to them because this is like really good hardware, you know? You need this. And so this is how you put these together, all right? When you're doing a, a strap, this is a removable long strap, okay? So the first thing you need to do, I'm gonna trim this off here, is you need to secure it to the center, okay, right here. We're just gonna turn it under and sew it really securely, all right, just like this. This is very thick. That's very thick. It makes me nervous. All right, uh, we're gonna do it double. I like to enclose the raw edge if possible. It's not a big deal if you don't. All right, because no one's really gonna see it. And then trim your threads now, you'll forget later. And they'll be covered up and you'll see them and you'll be like, shoot, try to trim those. All right, now take your strap. Okay, the end. And now you're gonna make sure you don't twist it, right? It's not twisted. And now go through the handle. Oh wait, we need to go through one of these. Oh, this is not the right width, but these are, <laughs> these are. Okay. Okay, so then go through here, right? And now go through your three bar slider. That's what this is called. That's the official name of it. All right. And then now you sew it through this one. All right. So it's only attached to one of these and the middle of your three bar slider. Yeah, I'm glad, Alan. They could sell it. They absolutely could sell it. I'll ask them first. Uh, I think that if I had made the stroller clips, then I would have used all of it. But I didn't make the stroller clips and they didn't say to make the stroller clips. So I think they gave me all the hardware needed to make the project if I'd made everything on it. All right, and so these are swivel clips. Swivels are really nice because it doesn't matter what way your strap is facing, it'll clip on to the end of your bag right here. All right? Boop, like that. All right, so that's our optional strap. And then, wait, do your threads. Always hard to see in these dark fabrics. All right, so now we have this. So now we're gonna sew our handles right here. So again, I, I just wanna say like you don't, these aren't necessary. You could have made your, if you if you would have just made this piece here and this piece here is one, one whole long strap, this whole thing, right? This whole thing as one, you could skip this hardware. This hardware is expensive, right? So um, that is one strategy. They're, they're not necessary. Your strap will function just fine without it. All right, so now we're gonna hem this on here. My machine's been very bobbin hungry lately, you think? I 
awesome, Matilda. You gonna make one too? That's awesome. Can I go through all this? Yeah. If this is too thick, you could finish the cut edge and then just fold it once instead of turning it under like I just did. I just turned it under. That's when webbing is a little bit um, thinner to sew and it's like more porous. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm gonna get right on this edge because I feel like that could pop out. So I'm gonna make sure that doesn't happen. All right, this looks meh. <laughs> and I'm just gonna repeat that. Don't twist your straps. Don't twist your straps. Like this. You thought they came as multiples in the bag. The um, hardware? Um, well, they sent me like, like some of them in individual little compartments and then there was one complete set for stuff. And I've needed pieces from all of it. So I needed these, those um, swivel things just now that I used. I needed them in the one and a half inch wide for the long strap. Maybe they don't have those individually or something, or they only have, they, maybe they do, and they wanted to get rid of that last little kit. I don't know. I don't really know how they do it. I know they have all the hardware because they were like, tell them we have all the hardware online. So that's great. And I've actually bought some of their hardware um, too, like when I was making Sandhill slings actually. Really, Kathy? That's awesome. <laughs> That's really cool. It's kind of cool to think like how old the the wood is in your saw the in your ham. That's pretty neat. This is a little awkward. <laughs> But I think they do this so that you don't have to, because you could have assembled all this and then attached it to the bag, but your handle would have been like so annoying the whole time you were sewing this bag, you know? Try and keep your handles the same length as one another too. So I'm just checking how much I turned back on this one so I can turn back a little bit more. The bag will feel funny if it's not, if they're not the same length, the handles. Jeez, Louise, that scared me. My heel pressed up on the um, thing to lift up the presser foot almost. My machine sounds so heavy duty when I've got that size 18 needle in there. I can hear it. <laughs> I always remember to trim all these little threads too. They're easy to forget. All right, my last one here. I'm sure Swoon's hoping I never sew one of their bags again. Grandmother's sleeve board, that's right. All right. For you. All right. 
put the, sorry, put the um, strap on there. Let's try it on. I don't have to get changed for this one. See, and this makes your strap adjustable, right? Just like that. I know about that stuff. Um, that I learned a lot about that stuff in the outerwear industry, which was kind of useful. Mm -mm. I'm so glad I don't need a diaper bag. Sing it with me. Love you moms out there though. <laughs> oh, I take it back. Maybe 60 inches isn't too long for this strap. If you're a curvy gal, you might want a longer strap. I'm holding the wrong thing while I adjust this. Here we go. Yeah, because look at that. And look at that's all I have right here. So if you're curvier than me, you might want a longer strap. Cute, very cute. Oh, you can't see the inside there. Pretend it's a carry-on, exactly. I would totally make this. I should make Cricut one. It's, I have the strap a little bit <laughs> long. If I were, I think if I were wearing this, I would probably be, have it up here. And like, I think it was Pam said, putting a little shoulder, a uh, soft shoulder thing would be nice. Can't sing it with me. All right, let's check it out. We survived. It is pretty cute. I'm a little stinky from that one. Like, <laughs> it made me sweat. <laughs> okay. I like this soft and stable foam. It's pretty cool to be able to use that for the first time, you know? Very nice, right? We got pockets right here. Uh, you have your end pockets here. So, you know, I didn't give you guys my spiel about using webbing, like right here, if this spot particular, if you end up buying one inch webbing to use on this bag instead of the, the like handles here, or here you use one and a half inch, I think that's great. But right here on this piece, when you sew this into the seam, do not for one single second think that putting it into the seam and top stitching it is enough. So do me a favor, make this stick into the seam a little lower. So basically, this is what it would look like in there. It would hang down, right? So this little strap hangs down in there and then stitch it again. Even if you just stitch it like a little X, a box with an X in it, something kind of cute, right? Just something, stitch this webbing down in there. So don't let it end right here at the seam put it down there. I, and, and so, and that's if you use webbing, webbing in particular, webbing is very, very weak unless you secure it. It's a very strong thing on its own, but when it's in a seam, it'll pull right out because the, the fibers of the webbing are just unraveling. And so it will pull right out of your seam. I would bet anything on it. <laughs> anything you want, I bet on it that it would come undone. And it won't take, it'll take, it won't take much weight. So just, just remember that. So and anytime you sew webbing, if it's webbing, make sure you stitch it twice at least, not just a sit seam and a top stitch. All right, this is beautiful. Whew. I love that the zipper was exactly the right length too, you know, so I didn't have to worry about that. What is that thread right there? That's annoying. I've been swimming in threads for the last two hours. Cool. All right. Um, two thirty. I may I may save the sport shorts till next week. That's great, Barbara. 
I think I'll save the um, sports shorts till next week. Um, maybe a surprise stream. So if you're interested in that, just watch for it. I didn't do the stroller, um, the stroller thingies. And so let me look at them. So just in case you might need tips, but I think you basically make the exactly the same as something like this right here, but you put the, the thingy, this thing. In fact, what is this for? What was this for? I was supposed to cut um, this out, cut these in half and I'd have four of these, but I don't know what that one's for. I'm not missing anything. And you wouldn't use this on the stroller thingy, the stroller clips. Yeah, so basically you take a long loop longer than this, right? And you um, sew it, you make it like this though, like the strapping, so it's completely finished on both sides. And you have a loop, and then this just slip knots onto your stroller bars. And they sit there, and then you can clip, what do you clip this to? Oh, they're long, and they clip to this right here. They're a lot longer. I don't know about that, you guys. I, I Before you go all out on the stroller clip thing, remember that, and I've done this before, and I know someone else has done this before, if the bag's too heavy, heavy, it will flip the stroller up with your kid inside if it's heavier than your kid, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so... So when you have that newborn in there and you are overpacking that diaper bag still, and your diaper bag weighs more than your baby, uh, yeah, your whole stroller is going to go boink. <laughs> or, you, or you pick the kid up. Every time you pick the kid, kid up out of there, the stroller is going to go boink. <laughs> so don't forget that. All right. Oh, Nancy, you could have had it done by now. Oh... All right, well, thanks for um, putting up with my ineptitude um, and uh, cheering me on. I think it turned out beautiful. It's a great pattern. I found the directions a little bit wordy. Uh, they're not inaccurate, though. Oh, yeah. I Yeah, Ellen, actually, a lot of people mentioned that. And, you know, I don't know where you live, but... I saw that Discovery Fabrics just bought out a diaper manufacturer's uh, PUL, which is like a, a waterproof barrier, and they have it in all these colors, and they're in Canada. Discovery Fabrics. That would be an excellent lining, I think. I think it's a lighter weight thing. Yeah, exactly, Nancy. Yeah, it, someone else mentioned that too, Ellen. I think that's a great idea. Just remember that you won't need the iron-on um, interfacing for that, those pieces, if you use it. And that if you do something like that on the outer as well, you won't need your interfacing. Um, and you, it may be a little stiffer in the seams. So, Hey, Ray, how's it going? Yeah, you need to put a rock under the kiddo. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. You do a sandbag, just a sandbag in the bottom of your stroller. I feel like my stroller was pretty basic, but I bet they're really fancy now. I know they were getting really fancy at the time. Like prams are just not an American thing, but man, when you're in Europe, you need a pram. You need a sprung buggy. Don't need those in America because we don't have cobblestone streets. That's what I learned. I brought my stroller over there and I was like, well, this thing's useless <laughs> because of the cobblestone streets. <sighs> oh, all right, guys. Well, yeah, look for a surprise stream if you're interested in the sport shorts. And thanks so much for joining me. Thanks uh, to Hearts Fabric. You guys, there's a 10% off. What the heck? Right here. 10% off code right here. I'll make it a little bigger for you. 
if you're interested. It's good on anything. You can buy whatever you want on their site with this, pretty much. 10% um, off, and it'll help pay for your shipping. And, um, yeah, this was fun. This is great. <laughs> it was fun. It was a little harrowing at times because I made it that way, but, yeah. If this is your first time watching me, I promise most of the time I know what I'm doing. Come back for a different stream. I hope you'll come back. Hope you'll subscribe too. All right, you guys, have a great weekend. If you're in the States and you're celebrating Labor Day, have a great long weekend. Good for you. Um, and next week, I don't have streams planned. The following week, I'm making the assembly line V-neck coat for Hearts Fabric again. At the end of the month, I am doing an Anything Goes week, which people really end up loving. And I do too, because we do all kinds of stuff. I just do whatever's in my bins. And I fix things, and I finish up underwear, and um, make a jacket and a shirt into a jacket. You just never know what's going to happen. Uh, so they're really fun. And uh, yeah, and you can join in. Get all of your works in progress done, all the weird little things. Join me. So, all right, you guys, have a great weekend. Bye.